Well, welcome to the Stone Roadie Podcast. It's the one you don't want to miss. It stars Craig Reed, the Stone Roadie, and Griff, the Rocket Scientist. Let's not forget Kathy Godsey and all the old friends that come along. Lord, we'll be a talking skinner and leave you with a song. Podcast 100 action. All righty then. Looky here. Looky here. Everybody listen to me and return me my ship. I'm your <laughs> captain. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, for, for, for somebody that just turned into the Stone Roadie show for the first time, we've been kind of planning on, uh, yeah, I, I got a, a, a flight simulator. I kind of, I got a few flight simulators. I got the driving simulators and the flight simulators. And I was telling, telling Griff, I like to dress up like a, like a pilot when I do my flight simulator. So he, he was dating a stewardess at this time. And somehow she, she found a way to uh, talk a pilot out of his, his <laughs> hat and, and his shirt. I couldn't imagine how she did that, but, uh, and he had a big old head. This is a seven and five eights. That's a big old water head, you know? So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, but it didn't have the uh, the the uh, wings on it. Those are wet World War II wings. I had to uh, accumulate those later on in these in these uh, in these collar things here. Yeah, I, I'm a little little overdressed. I'm kind of like one of those Korean generals, you know. I got <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I ain't never been in a war, and they got medals all over them. Yeah, you know. So I got my uh, I got my uh, my uh my uh um william Strait mm -hmm. sent me this he was a part of the uh 911 um uh rescue uh thing up there and he was uh, took a bunch of pictures up there and he sent me the uh wing wings there for the uh uh medical stuff and then i got my my president trump official uh button there and uh and i guess that it kind of explains my uni my uniform you know but uh <laughs> but yeah but uh, this is actually that's my that's my property right there the brown and i can i can actually land a plane down in here and i can use that for my <laughs> whole runway and and that you know, I, you, Craig, you know why it's brown because the government sprayed paraquat on it because right, they right, thought you yeah. were growing <laughs> weed. No, that's that's an old picture, but I don't know for some reason I I mowed my mowed all my grass down and it kind of mm. like kind of like it was in the summer and it all turned brown. And when <laughs> they did a an aerial, it I don't know they made it all brown, but anyways, it's easy to see, you know. So yeah, all that brown stuff, that's all my property there, and I can uh, I can actually let, land a small plane on there, but not this one I'm flying here. But uh, but anyways, yeah. So uh, that that's that, and yeah, this is the Stone Roadie Show, and this is a uh, podcast one hundred. And, uh, yeah, we didn't start doing this to, uh, <clears throat> let me see here. I'm not quite, oh, I lost my window. Doggone it. Oh, there it is over here. We didn't start doing this to do donations, but, uh, as the, as we, as we started along, people wanted to start donating to the, we we named them the forgotten survivors and uh sorry i'm not more prepared here let me let me get to my windows here oh here we go wait a minute okay this should be the one here oh doggone it okay here we go 
Well, Craig, if you'd have had that uniform on whenever you uh, got on the plane, I think probably Ronnie would have let you fly it. <laughs> so anyways, here's our our new window. We actually got we actually got another uh, another donation today from Jesus for Survivors sent in another $1000 today. So that for for round 2, we're on round 2 of our donations. Our our round 1 we 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 collected fifteen thousand dollars and we gave three people. Uh, 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 we gave five people three thousand dollars each. So we gave away uh, fifteen thousand dollars. And Jesus for survivors, uh, the thousand he sent in today, he sent in he's he's donated five thousand dollars toward the. Uh, forgotten survivors so yeah good for you jesus for survivors and then and then on our round two um 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 part here but don and don and um and marcia uh, they sent in a thousand and then dave tate he sent in 200 last week and then uh roger johnson he sent in 125 well actually roger uh uh, uh, came by, uh, yeah, uh, Roger came by actually and, and, uh, dropped me off 125 bucks. He's the one that wanted me to, to, to go golfing with him <laughs> anyway. So, <laughs> so then Pete Como, he sent in a hundred bucks last week. So for, for round two here, uh, we got, uh, three thousand six hundred and forty seven dollars for round two and we got uh we got the monument coming up here uh on october the 20th and and uh but we give if we give all the survivors a thousand bucks there's five of them that's five thousand dollars so i think we got like maybe three of them going down to the monument don't we griff this, yeah this no, time i think we got uh mark howard uh yeah. mark frank and gene odom i think are gonna go down so we'll we'll be able to uh hand each one of those guys a, 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 a another thousand dollars at at the monument down there so uh so um yeah that'll uh, be yay. handy <laughs> give them so a little gas money yeah that'll be another another celebration we can look to forward to down there at the monument and in and for those of you haven't that haven't heard i think all of you have heard our our, our convoy took a poop you know but <laughs> but uh yeah I'm, I'm still gonna be there yeah but uh but anyway so uh what else we got going on here um well, I don't know. Well, what do you what do you got going on, Griff? You take it over for a while here. Well, uh, yeah, we got some some guests. Craig's going to be bringing in here. He's got uh, he's got several people that he's going to um, send an invite to, and they're going to join us, and we're going to celebrate the one hundredth, uh, you know, with some people that's been on before. And then uh, I just got back from. Uh, a pretty long trip <clears throat> it was a pretty long trip up to uh virginia and i and i did that interview with uh with with uh, joey davis uh and uh, oliver anthony's guitar player which was pretty cool and so i got some good footage of that and then uh <clears throat> i've been talking about that 911 call with uh automotive and we're gonna we'll play that for you too um so some pretty cool stuff coming up uh and uh kathy don't you have you got some stuff you wanted to share yeah first of all i want to say happy birthday to joey yemma he's a great guy he follows the podcast all the time happy birthday joey and then can i give a couple of shout outs to people i always have them ready okay scott peatman ken johnson david van zant will Wilburn, david selders susan mcmaster homer hancock tim maney David Rice, Annette, and Winslow Red Cross. They just put, on the last podcast, they just put some really nice positive feedback, and they're really supportive, so I just wanted to say thank you to them for all of that. 
Yeah, there's somebody I want to mention too, a guy that uh, is in uh, Joe Crimp's band, uh, Damon Boatwright. He's a guitar player for Joe Crimp, and he took a really bad spill off a ladder and broke a bunch of ribs. And this was, uh, uh, it's been some time. He's, he's, and I just found out about it, and he's kind of struggling, caught pneumonia in the hospital. So you guys say a prayer for Damon Boatwright and uh, Joe Crimp's band Vinyl. You know, Joe Crimp was on here and, uh, He's pretty upset about it, and it's, it's that guy's such a cool guy, and I hope he he's getting better. His girlfriend uh, Glory's taking care of him, and she's uh, got a lot of people praying for him. So, Damon, uh, maybe you can watch this, man. We're pulling for you, buddy. So uh, that's uh, that's about all I got with that, Craig. Uh, you uh, want to start inviting some people in? Um, well, um, you know what? I thought it was going to take us longer to, uh, do this pre-show. You know, we, we kind of just roll with these things. We don't do any rehearsals <laughs> or anything. And I kind of <clears throat> told Kathy, we were going to have a lot to talk about and we need to start early and this and that. Well, we could talk thing. about that event down there at Whitey's. Uh, they, they were selling some whiskey down there and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that was quite a, quite a line down there at, uh, wow. at Whitey's for that whiskey. I guess Dale was down there and, uh, and, um, yeah, it was a big why. turnout. Yeah. Yeah. Now what was the event? that everybody went they were selling that uh hell house whiskey oh that's what yeah. that was okay okay and they were lined up out the door down there wow. and uh yeah they i guess it was a huge turnout and then i, I could wow. see on facebook where there was a like a huge rainstorm and people were coming out of that rainstorm soaking wet waiting in line there but they uh you know they they stood in line and in uh true skinnered form you know to, to go <laughs> see their favorite uh musicians i think ricky medlock was there and johnny uh van zant was there and uh dale krantz was there i don't know who else was there i think that might have been it but um didn't chad go to that craig yeah 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 chad went to it and uh, i don't yeah. think he got to speak to johnny it was so crowded i don't even think he got to speak to him but uh oh my god there was so many people there yeah they had i guess they got there a little late they had they had to park quite a ways away yeah and craig you, you, you were telling me that it's kind of like a southern comfort type whiskey that's in there and that <clears throat> that's what chad chad doesn't drink whiskey especially on days when he's got to work or whatever the next day but he he don't drink whiskey much at all i don't think at all but uh he, he said people said it kind of it was kind of syrupy like southern comfort but uh yeah i don't know but yeah but is there any information on uh, on the monument site? I saw there was pictures of Brandon Miller down there uh, pouring concrete. Or yeah, um, uh, I'm gonna do a uh, catch up before we go up there. Uh, um, there's a um, there's actually a fire risk up there right now, so they're they're really concerned. I mean, it's not gonna affect it or anything. You know, it's still gonna happen, but um, they're they're gonna want to be very mindful about people coming out there. You can't have a bonfire or smoke cigarettes, and because it's so dry that everybody's even scared to cut their grass, and they're afraid it'll start a, a big fire. You know, we don't want to. We don't want to end up like they did in Hawaii, you know, over there at the monument <laughs> with a <laughs> with a whole thing there. But uh yeah, everything's moving right along. They've uh they've got the the uh foundation the concrete poured. Brandon Miller was up there doing that. They got that uh ready to go. I, I guess they're pulling the forms off probably today and then pretty soon they'll they'll bring in the uh the big huge carving and and they got to set that with a crane so that's going to be all set ready to go everybody's going to be able to see the new uh the new the new marble uh carving there with ronnie and the poem in it so that's going to be really cool and then they've got some bands um coming that uh they're going to play uh i guess right there by the monument during the day uh so 
Yeah, it's going to be fun if you guys haven't gotten your hotel yet. Um, you know, the Craig and I, we got our rooms, and um, we're going to be staying at the Days Inn in Macomb. So uh, you got yeah, wanna... both of us will be there at the same mm. at the same ho- hotel. We'll probably do some some live streaming and uh, and maybe down down while we're eating breakfast or whatever, we'll be down there doing the live stream or whatever. I don't know. I imagine we'll try to come up with something. <laughs> it, it's definitely not a five-star resort that days in. As a matter of fact, when I was there, they the last time they were in the middle of remodeling it, and I kind of got a a room that was pretty substandard. But um, it's all fixed up now. I think as far as you know, they can get it. It's uh, it's uh, right across the the uh interstate there from from the uh, quality in too so there's a quality in there there's a day's in and there's some places to eat so even though it's in macomb and macomb's kind of like a, a little town there's still restaurants there and things like that um but uh like i was telling everybody that i don't know how much they have it worked out as far as uh like uh ability to bring to to read a credit card or anything so you you might want to bring some cash and there's going to be lots of t-shirts and posters and things like that for sale. And, um, and then you've got that James Hughes, uh, thing going on at the uh, bed and breakfast where they're uh, going to have a lot of, uh, plain parts there at, and they, and they have some pretty significant amount of stuff, um, instrument panels and seats that came off the plane, stuff like that. Pretty cool stuff to look at you know, artifacts that were, uh, on the plane and that were part of the plane. And so, uh, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a fun time. And then, you know, there's going to be some, uh, acoustic guitars, people sitting around jamming and get to meet a lot of people. Gene Odom's going to be there in rare form. He's actually there now. now that Gene, he drives all over the place. You know, he <laughs> drove, he drove out there. He's helping him with the foundation. Uh, you know, that guy's crazy. He's got a plate in his head he's got plate in his neck he's got rods up his back and you can't you can't stop him you know he's <laughs> you got to push him out of the way i mean i was helping him work on his house and he i said gene go sit down no you go sit down mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so he's a crazy man he's an animal but uh yeah he'll be there craig will be there uh hopefully mark howard i'm not sure about mark frank but um you know, there's going to be like t-shirts and stuff and you guys get your, get your stuff signed. Craig's going to be signing stuff there too. And, uh, Craig usually carries a big bundle of business cards that, uh, that he already has signed. So but you're, you're not going to be there. Are you Kathy? Are you going to be able to make it? No, I can't. No. I'm actually, I'm, I'll be a grandma right around that time. My daughter's oh, wow. having her first baby. Yeah. So I'm kind of on standby for whenever I get oh, that boy. call. Yeah, yeah, right around the end of October. Yeah, so I'm going to be. Well, that's pretty cool. Congratulations. My, thank you. I'll save up my money for the airfare out to Colorado <laughs> when I yeah. get that call. Yeah. So we're looking forward to seeing you guys. And like Craig said, the uh, the convoy, we canceled that. Um, it was starting to get logistically impossible, you know, and Craig was trying to figure out how to get that antenna rigged on there and finally he was just like you know what let's just it's getting too complicated so so sorry about that those of you guys um that uh that were uh, looking forward to that uh but it's still going to be fun you can still follow craig down if you want i'm sure craig wouldn't mind if you <laughs> jump behind him uh, uh good luck with that you better <laughs> unless you drive about 110 miles an hour and learn how to weave <clears throat> You're not going to catch oh, up. I can vouch for that. Craig yeah. likes to watch TV while he's driving, you know. Yeah. That's a little crazy. Yeah. And then the the radar detector, whatever, is like, bah! I'm screaming the whole time. There's a lot of stuff going on. I, I remember uh, when Craig came down for that Polk Theater thing, and uh, we actually stayed in Bartow because there was a, a pretty nice hotel not too far away from the, the event. And, uh, and my ex girlfriend and and I were we were at the Waffle House there eating with Craig. I think it was a Waffle House, and and we got in the car to ride back to the hotel, and and Craig kind of like took a a path like the crow flies and went over the curb and the grass and everything, and we were like, <laughs> what the hell? 
<laughs> so yeah, anytime Craig's around, it's it's you know it's a hoot. You know yeah. you're gonna see some stuff that you never seen before. He's a little he's a little different, but uh, he's fun to be around. So. <laughs> I'm, Are you coming I'm, with those invites, Craig? I'm anybody? sending out, yeah, and I'm sending them out. I've, I've, uh, I, uh, yeah, Chad's at work. He's in his car, and I, and I don't, I, I yeah. guess he, I, um, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, what we're going to do is, is, you know, normally on these Zoom meetings, the way you do it is, is you send an invite out and to their email and, this is kind of like, I mean, we don't really know what we're doing. You know, we're not professional at this technology here. So, uh, you know, we're just going to send an invite. And I think Craig's got like 10 or 12 people that are kind of standing by. And so, uh, it could be anybody popping in, you know, uh, uh, Mitch Scooby. I know he, he checked with me and then I, uh, invited the lanes, uh, chad lane zach lane our our house band those guys are maybe they're standing by so uh ain't no telling who's gonna pop in but uh but you know it, it could be a lot of people on here at once or it might end up not even be anybody <laughs> just be the three of us and we'll sing we'll just yeah. sing <laughs> yeah we'll tell some jokes got any good jokes <laughs> but but you know a hundred podcast that's and you were like how many did were you involved with kathy i don't this know is, craig is craig this is, is her count. this is kathy's 21st oh okay 21st yeah, okay. yeah and yeah. it started off and, and kathy was kind of like you know it was nice because whenever i would go on the road kathy would take my place you know and and i and i would be able to uh to go off and do stuff and while i was gone kathy could keep things rolling and then we did the saturday night specials and uh, Kathy usually handles like the question parts of people that have questions and she goes through YouTube and, uh, and then Facebook and, and people that have questions, uh, she goes through there because you know, a lot of people, uh, they like to find out, they like to pick Craig's brain. And, uh, so Craig and I, we usually get off onto a tangent on some other topic and then people are one, they ask questions, they don't ever get answers. So Kathy comes behind and kind of mops things up for us. And <laughs> <laughs> so, so here we are again, all three of us on the podcast, uh, you know, the 100th for our celebration and, uh, and then, and then at the end we got the on the road thing. So it, it might be a little lengthy, uh, but, uh. You know, I, I do have some a couple of questions while um, that came in from last week's podcast while we're waiting for people to join. Yeah, cool. Great. You know, I love just a couple now. I love Homer Hancock. He's so funny. He goes, this is what he said. Hey, y'all. Great to see you, Craig. This Saturday, Diddy special night. <laughs> Kathy is looking so purdy as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Cottonmouth country. Early Skinner tune is on YouTube. Remember last week we were asking somebody asked about Cottonmouth Country. He says it's on YouTube. Google on YouTube. It's the song with a picture of Ronnie Van Zant, Gary, and Bob Burns on drums, on some little stage with Ronnie barefoot. And Alan is not shown the way the picture cuts him out. Apparently, y'all be safe and have a good one. I love him. He's funny. And then uh, Don 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 Dono or Don Dono. Craig, he wants to know whether um, you ever crossed paths with the band Kiss. Kiss? Did you ever get to know the band Kiss or those guys? No. I I did a show, uh, well, <laughs> when I first, very first got with Leonard Skinner, we were in Atlanta. Right. And Kiss was playing in some bar. And, and I mean, literally a bar and all they had was some police lights on the, <laughs> on each, uh, stack of PA on, on each side of the stage. And they were in their, in their getups and I was laughing. I goes, those guys, they never going to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. It was, yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it was funny. 
<laughs> you know, so I'm no talent scout. That's for sure. <laughs> did you did you remember talking to Gene Simmons or I was, Freely? I, just, or? I was just there watching them. I did. I was just laughing at them, you know, because yeah, they were yeah. they were all in their getups, you know, and they had you know that like I said, the only thing they had was the couple of police light, red police lights on the <laughs> on the on the on the, the, the PA at, uh, on each side of the stage. It was kind of funny. But uh, no, I really like Kiss. But uh, I've, I've, I have I've have worked a couple of shows up at Blossom where, where, where Kiss played, yeah, and they were, you know, I, I enjoyed the Kiss shows. Yeah, they were, so they uh, opened up for Skinner, did they? No, no, no. Huh? What year did they come out? I can't remember what year it was. That was, was it 73. After? That was 74, okay. 1974. That's yeah. when I saw him at Alex Cooley's yeah. ball, yeah, ballroom down there in, in Atlanta in 74. Had to be 74 because I just got with Skinner. Yeah. Yeah, I never I'm, really um, I never really got into Kiss, <clears throat> but I saw Ace Freely this summer at a little country place in New Jersey, and I was standing right up against – in front of Ace Freely, he was really good. The songs were good. I really enjoyed. It. I think I only I, I can only name three Kiss songs, but I really oh, enjoyed yeah. the concert. He had that the smoking guitar was really really good. Really good yeah. shot. Yeah, I went to several Kiss concerts, man. And when oh, they did? came, I never wanted to miss a Kiss concert because they put on such a great show, you know. And then uh, they've got some really good music too, and it's just. Uh, yeah. It's you know it's a it's a riveting performance um, with Kiss, um, and they have a huge. They're like uh, Skinner too, as far as their fan following. You know, they have a huge fan following. Um, but uh, yeah, so <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention too is um, I uh, I'm going to have a lot of uh, Joey Davis. Uh, video that I'm going to put up on the Griff Martin files. I didn't, I wasn't able to put it all up on this, uh, on the road with Griff Martin because it was just too much. So if you guys want to see Joey Davis, um, some of his other stuff that I didn't put on the, on the road, go to the Griff Martin files and within the next few days, I'll have it all up there. And, uh, and then, uh, I did go and watch six gun in St. Paul, Virginia, and did some some footage there and a lot of that's on the griff martin files and uh, that's that zach lane and uh and then uh you got nick gentry on the guitar and then savannah on the uh, bass and those guys are really good and good uh have you seen them much uh kathy they're they're really uh they're, no. they're, since they got the bass player and uh, you know they're just so tight and um and then you know they're they're going to do something. I don't want to spill the beans on it, but they got a big surprise coming up. It's something that they're going to be they're going to be recording. So we don't want to talk too much about that. But um, when it comes out, we'll uh, yeah. we'll talk about it on the podcast. How what you doing is, with the invites, Craig? What the, I've been sending them out. Nobody's coming on yet. I I, I didn't. I told everybody to to be prepared from two to two thirty. I thought we were going to take a a little longer than we did. Uh, what's uh, the first uh, few of uh, Zach's? It'll come up on my... Oh, um, yeah, I could probably... Uh... Zach, is it Zach? Start, start out with Z. Yeah, it does, yeah. Do you see it? Well, no, his is something music, isn't it? Um, Yeah. Yeah, I think it, I wrote. I might have wrote that down somewhere, but um, hey, Mary. Hey, Mary. he, you know what they <clears throat> they might not even be. Try, type in uh, official Zach. Oh, that's right. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. There I, it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> there you can send them an invite, but you know he's a rock and roll star, so he's probably still asleep. Who knows? That's a good looking cat you got there, Kathy. Thank you. He's my 24 pounder. Is that a Siamese? <laughs> is, that a, is that a part Siamese? No, he's he's Angus. He's a big, he's a big black short haired cat. He's humongous. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a big devil. He's considered yeah. obese, and I've tried putting him on a diet, but all he does is beg for food. 
<laughs> well, I mean, Craig, if he if he was at your house, he'd be skinny, <laughs> man. He's... He'd be on a crash diet real quick. <laughs> Craig, Craig would probably put him on bread and water for about yeah. six months. <laughs> well, I'll send Angus over to your house. We'll shape him up. <laughs> oh, yeah. And there's there's actually a new place where you can find Craig Reed now. You can find me at the YMCA in the sauna. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I'd yeah. like to, to make a shout out to the guy that I gave my uh, – the, the guy I told to watch the Stone Roadie show last night in the sauna. Hey, <laughs> he said he would, said he would watch. <laughs> so I'd like to just recap. Anybody who's in the Ohio area, the Akron area, <laughs> wants to run into Craig Reed, the celebrity, the Stone World famous Stone Roadie. If you go to the Giant Eagle Market, he's there every day. <laughs> You can go to the video store because he's probably one of the few people who still goes and rents videos. <laughs> no, no, no. I get those at the library. Oh, the library. Oh, that's right. The live now. Craig goes to the library. <laughs> the post office because Craig goes to the post office. And now the, the, the YMCA. Do you actually do you go to the bank or do you do stuff online like most people? Or do you go into banks? <laughs> oh, I go to the bank every one now and then, yeah. but you know, most yeah. of us go to the drive through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Craig, did you send Billy Fender a, a invite? I did, you? yeah. He and he he said I haven't gotten my my thing yet, but I sent it to him and he hasn't uh he hasn't yeah, he's, responded he's, yet. He's so. checking it and then uh and then uh and I, I think sent Mitch. Pops and I sent Mitch and I sent Andy. And uh, Chad, I can't remember his. Uh, and Mark uh, Howard, he he didn't get back to me. So um, yeah, so you know, I mean, this is that whole this thing, is thing Stone Roadie Show. <laughs> well, well, we you tried. Remember, <laughs> well, you know, guys, while we're waiting for people to join, do you remember the podcast that we did on um, on New Year's Eve, Craig, from your house? That was number fifty. Uh -huh. And what was cool, I like that one because we recapped all of the guests that were on the podcast from one up till that point. So I always say if anybody wants to look for a particular guest who was on the show, look at podcast 50 because we have all the lists. Like, for example, Kenny Peden was on podcast 16. Mark Howard was on 18. Paul, uh, Mike Estes, he was on a bunch of them, 25, 26, 24. 37 everybody <clears throat> wants to have to come back he was on 47 so you know podcast 50 is a good one to look if you want to see all the guests that have been on the show so um i thought that was a really really informative podcast and gene odom of course everybody loves gene odom yeah so um and the one that i was on that 28 the one that you the three of us plus gene odom were on that has almost ten thousand views wow it's like nine point yeah i think it's i think it was a great oh somebody's on Oh, there's there's Mitch Davis. Okay, Mitch Davis. Yeah, uh, I like forty six with Joe Crimp. I think it's forty six. You have that written down, Kathy? Yes, yes, that's <laughs> yeah. uh, forty six. Yep. That is like the most informative podcast. That Joe Crimp. There yeah. he is, Mitch. What's going on, man? Hey, <laughs> hear ye, hear ye, fucking hear ye. The crew is here. <laughs> Well, we we're uh, you know we're technophobes, you know, and we probably ought to be letting Kathy run this meeting because I'm sure she'd have had it, had her act together. Me and Craig, we don't we don't know what we're doing. But uh, how you doing, Mitch? I'm doing great, man. Good to be alive in Tennessee. Yeah, you uh, you've been staying busy. I know you got that new airplane or something that you've been messing with. How's that going? I've uh, just been busy working on a bunch of stuff, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. You, you, are you going to be able to make it to the uh, to the monument thing? Do you think you'll be able to go there? Yes, I will be making a uh, a guest appearance. Absolutely. Cool. Cool. So so we can you know have a, like a little powwow you know around the, the it won't be a fire but. <laughs> around a round table meeting and we can get a lot of stories going there and mitch gooby man he's this guy's got a ton what, what podcast do you know what podcast he was on kathy uh let me check it out while i'm checking mitch are you from new jersey yes i saw your message i grew up in clark 
No way. Oh my gosh. Clark. Yeah. I know a lot of people. Yeah, as a matter of fact, well, I started my music stuff writing actually in Cranford. There was a company called Sound by Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Over by the railroad. Yeah. And, and I, I worked for Paul Joswich as I started as a generator operator. And I was oh, out okay. running his, driving his trucks to gig to gig. Um, because nobody had power back then. So everybody used a generator truck. So that's where I started in music. Oh, that's where I'm from, Cranford. That's so cool. I'm back there every weekend, actually. I go, but I love Clark. Yeah, Clark doesn't have a center, but you know, um, it's a nice town. It hasn't changed. <laughs> right. They haven't the population of Clark has not changed, if you know what I'm saying. But uh, but you were on 15. I have you down as 15 and um yeah, that's the only one I have you down. Were you only on the one podcast originally, or were you on another one? Do you know? I I think I did a couple. I think I did one early on, and then uh, okay. uh, myself and uh, Pops were on another. There's a bunch yeah. of some. I, I stopped. I stopped keep, keeping track at fifty because we did the <laughs> we did the New Year's Eve show on fifty. So, yeah, if anybody wants to do the rest of them, but if I get a chance, I'll track them. And uh, hey, Mitch, do you know uh, where it was? I know Ed King, whenever he left the band, when he quit and that night that he left and uh, and then he ended up moving to New Jersey. Does anybody know where he lived at in New Jersey? You know, he was teaching lessons up there and um, and he was in New know. Jersey for quite some time. I, I don't know why he ended up, you know, going to New Jersey other than I think he knew some people there or something, but uh Hey, Craig, Bill Billy Fender says he didn't get an email from you. You might want to try sending him again. Um, I just sent him one. Yeah. Maybe he's maybe he's got some of that same weed you got. You know, he can't. <laughs> I said, I just said, I just did send him one. Send him one twice, I think. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. So, hey, uh, you, you uh, been flying that plane much, man? Yeah, I've been uh, been doing a lot of training, so been uh, learning to learning to fly airplanes like two twin engine planes with one engine. That's been my my, my latest uh, crack at uh, aviation. You, how you like Craig's uh, little outfit there, man? I, I was looking at that, and I was wondering <laughs> if he beat up a Qantas pilot, or I was trying to figure out where it all came from. He's got a couple cross pens going on in the pocket, so I'm kind of like, what's he got going on there? <laughs> yeah I, I i that's what i was explaining i'm like a one of them korean generals i put there, <laughs> something everywhere i could put it <laughs> yeah it, on halloween he's gonna he's gonna go to the airport at halloween and pretend he's everybody's pilot and freak him out you know like oh my god <laughs> man i'm flying on this plane for real <laughs> oh shit kind of like a bizarro catch me if you can you know that or that movie with DiCaprio. That's yes. Craig. Yeah, yeah. That, that was uh, you know what's his name Frank uh, Abernale. I don't know how to say his last name. That was, yeah, that's a great story. Yeah, it was. That was, we were talking about. We were talking about that earlier. Uh, but you know, we were telling the story about how Craig got that. I had there was this girl I was dating, a flight attendant, and I and I told her, see if you could get my friend Craig a. And what size hat is that, Craig? It, seven you, and five eight. The seven and five there eight. There ain't no pilot gonna have a head as <laughs> big, big old water head the size of mine. I know she had a lot of trouble finding it. I remember complaining about it, and I said, "Well, you know, he is not gonna take no for an answer." So I don't know what she did, but <laughs> she got it. <laughs> I was on a Southwest flight and there was a flight attendant who was like ripping apart the front, something in the front closet up there. Maybe that was uh, a little, maybe it was like too close. Okay, we got Zach coming on. All the right. Zachinator. There they hey, are. Look at there. <laughs> Can you hear us? Looky here. Sound I check. Just, I just sent so, Billy Fender another, another uh, thing. Apparently, supposedly, we can get 12 people on here at once. We're, I was kind of curious. Are we hey, on the air right hey now? Zach, can you hear? Yeah, can you hear us? Yeah, man, loud and clear, man. Hey, how you guys doing? Pretty good. Very well. All right. Hey, Effer. 
<laughs> hey, Jennifer, how are you? <laughs> did did Nick go to his baseball game, or was it a baseball game or something he was going to? Yeah, he uh, he went with CJ, which is Craig Jr., uh, six guns, Rody. So he went, uh, yeah, I think they were going to watch a football game or something. So I called him and uh, told him that you said just go ahead and go to the to the ball game. Yeah, that's Nick Gentry. He's he's uh he plays in the band with uh with Zach and, and Chad. And uh funny story is uh Gene Odom. How tell that story about he got named uh, Smick. How did he get named Smick, Chad? I I'm not sure really. I it was at Rockin' for a reason, but I'm not I'm not real sure how that, that came about. I think that um maybe Gene heard him wrong, or uh, that's what Nick says that, that Gene heard him wrong and he introduced himself and shook his hand and and gene just kind of looked at him for a second and then said oh smick okay <laughs> so, so he's so that's his new name is smick and he's got it stenciled on all of his amps and things so he so does. he's uh, now he's smick so uh, how you guys doing today up there in the mountains of virginia there uh, zach what's going on man what you up to not much yeah. I've not been up long, to be honest. I know, I know <laughs> these guys. I stayed with them for about three days, and they, oh, it was so fun, man. And those, and we uh, is that Stony Gap? Is that the name of that? No, town? it's it's Big Stone Gap. Big Stone Gap, yes, yeah. Big Stone Gap. And uh, man, it, it, I mean, it's really nice up there in the mountains. And I was getting up in the morning and sitting on the porch, and I was thinking, this is where yeah, I need I to be, man. Morning, it's so, so nice and cool and everything, and. uh and then uh you know those guys they're rock and roll stars so they don't get up till about three and, and zach zach says i gotta have my beauty sleep man but we had fun didn't we zach we did and we had a lot of fun yeah i mean you know it's uh that that lyric in saint paul that was a really good gig and uh, you guys uh did really great i videoed a lot of that and uh like i was saying go to the the griff the griff martin files if you want to check that out um but uh, hey, you guys say hi to Mitch Scooby, man. Yeah, man. I want to say hey to Mitch because that is uh, so we got the number one stoned roadie, the most famous roadie, and the most famous bus driver in the world. So am right. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to say hello to Kathy too. Hey, Kathy. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice Zach. You. Hey. <laughs> nice to meet you. We we were trying. We were thinking about uh, asking mitch to drive the rv if we were going to do that convoy and i don't think mitch wanted any part of that shit <laughs> <laughs> no you know, you, yeah you don't want to you know i mean you've been doing that for so many years it's like you know that's a, probably the last thing you wanted to do but uh it didn't happen anyway so no actually um actually rides like that are kind of fun when it's like you know when you, you don't have to sit there you're not on a press schedule and you don't have 12 people behind you and everybody wants to do something different. Like right now, it's, um, let me tell you, having, having just a handful of people, you know, just taking an easy ride. There's nothing like it. That's the best way to travel either empty, empty or half full. There you and go. you've already, uh, had, a, uh, to show for Craig around. So, you know, what to expect there. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. Absolutely. What, what was it like chauffeuring Craig around anyway? What was that like, Mitch? <laughs> um just you know I, I know it was just laid back because i had um i always had uh the backline guys on my bus as, as a crew bus so it was always laid back everybody you know i had guys that have been touring for years and years and you know and you're up in the front you have a big comfortable jump seat on the right and at the time i always had a I always had a smoking bus also anybody could smoke on the bus so craig used to come up front and hang out and we just uh take in the scenery and uh, solve the world's problems once in a while. And it was very, uh, very laid back, you know, it was just very, very chill. You didn't happen to have a, a TV on your bus that you watch while you're driving. Cause I'm trying to figure out where Craig got that idea from. <laughs> what? Like now for I've had a TV in my car. <laughs> i tell you where I got the, I, when I was a kid, I went to a car show and, uh, uh, Kooky Burns on 77 Sunset Strip had actually had a TV in that bucket T. And I went, when I grow up, I'm going to have a TV in my car. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. 
Well, well, Craig never grew yeah, up. When I put a TV Steve, in my car. Steve Reynolds tells a story about when he came pulling up to that storage unit where they used to practice, and he pulls up in in Ronnie Van Zant's Jeep with a TV on in the front with a bottle of Jack Daniels between his legs, and and they were like, "Who the hell is this guy?" You know, and he's like, "Oh, I work for Leonard Skinner," you know, and they're like, "Okay, yeah, right." <laughs> <coughs> So we got two yeah, people good. trying to come on. Who's that? Hey, there's Andy Tannis. Hey, All Andy. Right. Hey, Andy. Hey. How are you? Hey, Griff, how you doing? Hey, Andy. How's it going, man? How you doing? Good to see you. Hi, Kathy. Hi. So nice to finally meet you. <laughs> yeah, that's how are you? Good. I'm good. Thank you. Kathy kind of keeps track of the uh, episodes that everybody was on, and she does a good job of it. I could never do that. <laughs> I don't know what episode Andy was on. You remember which one, Andy, which one it was? I can check that right. I can check that. Yeah, Yeah, I have it right here, actually. Um, Andy, you were on 27 with Paul Abraham. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, well, if it was after 50, I don't know, because I only went up to 50. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm 27. That was before I was on. Yeah. Kathy's real good about sending me text messages about uh, the, the show being on and that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Well, she's I, the, I, she's I just the only that one video. that has any orgas- organizational skills because she's a teacher. You almost you know? said something else. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that was a forty. Well, that was a forty and slip. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't know about that. I have to say I wouldn't know about that. But uh, Andy, I saw your your daughter that video of your daughter yesterday playing mm-hmm, the guitar yeah, right. when she was little. Oh yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I thought she was a guitarist. She looked so natural. With was that a guitar or bass she was holding? That was a G and L. Um, it was a G and L that Leo Fender gave me. Oh, and she kept, she kept picking it up out of the case. So I said, "Well, why don't we just put it on you?" And the thing it weighed ten pounds, <laughs> and they, they were about to throw it away. Um, oh my asked for it, and Leo gave it to me. So um, anyway, she uh, I put it on her. <laughs> it, it almost brought her down <laughs> so heavy, but she, she dropped a couple of poses for me. So, yeah. You know. Very cute. And I love that song you wrote. But that song you, so you sang. So pretty. It's really, really pretty. Yeah. Andy, you ought to get together with this Zach Lane here, man. He's trying to build up a good resume. You know, he needs a, he needs a rock and roll star to play with so he can write that down on his resume. Have, have you heard him play yet? It, I, I get mixed up. Is he in that? Um, is he in that band with the with the girl bass player? Or is he yeah. In that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I've seen several videos. They're really good. Yeah. Aren't they great? Yeah. yeah I, I, I've loved on everything they've done so far. Yeah. And yeah, Otto's. Yeah. Otto posts a lot of videos, and you know, I try to uh, I try to check those out as much as possible. I think they're a really good band. They seem to be making some noise out there. Oh man, they're so tight, you know, and everybody uh, loves their new edition, Savannah. And uh, there's Chad Reed. <laughs> Can you hear us, Chad? He's in, it looks like he's in the car. Chad, yeah, he's working. <laughs> Chad, he's still like connecting. I can see yeah. he might, he might be, uh, he might be uh, having a bad signal there, but. <clears throat> <laughs> Is that the Stone Roadie airline pilot? <laughs> yeah. What do you think about that get up there, Andy? I'm impressed. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'd ever fly with Craig piloting the plane or not is another question. I'm not sure about that. No. I I only fly flight simulators. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Yeah, there's a, <clears throat> there's a story about how he got that hat, you know, and uh, and and that and that shirt. You'll have to go back and watch it because we've already told it three times. But <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I, I was saying, Craig, he you know he lives right there by uh, an airport, and he's going to go down to Halloween and walk around the airport and pretend like he's a, he's everybody's captain. <laughs> how about it, Chad? You got his. Hey Say Chad, do you, Chad, do you remember uh, Craig breaking a brush on your ass one day when you were? <laughs> oh, we had a big. Do you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. It's we a little a low. Spoon hanging on the wall one time. We broke off of my ass too. <laughs> 
You did, Craig didn't beat you when you were a kid, did he? <laughs> his mom, his mom got pissed because I broke a brush on him. I was pissed off. I got that brush at Harrods. That was an expensive brush. But it was all right. <laughs> <laughs> this is your son yeah yeah yeah. No way, really? yeah can't you tell it looks just like him. yeah I, I see i see some resemblance in there who are the other two who are the other two guys oh well that's mitch scooby you know who mitch scooby is no sorry he, I don't. he was our bus driver yeah he mitch was a was bus, driver. bus driver um he's been on a couple times but uh he's he's the bus driver for the stars. You know, he's driven everybody, man. It's like this it, is the guy sitting next to the guy with the long hair. No. Oh, that's Chad. That's oh, um man. that's uh Hi, yeah, Zach, Hi. Zach and Chad. Zach and Chad. Uh that's, Zach, that's Chad. six guns. Zach, Zach Lane. Zach Lane, he's gonna be famous one day. So, you know, one day he's oh, gonna yeah. be he, he's gonna be the guy going, you know, who's that? You know, instead I love, <laughs> man. I love yeah, you guys are rocking on you keep it up, man. Keep fanning that flame. Zach was the the TikTok sensation. Now he's the Stone Roadie Show sensation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's our house band. <laughs> making some noise. He's making some noise, and that's a good thing. It's nice to meet you, Andy. I I it really enjoyed the uh, the episode with you on there. And I want to say something before too many people get on here, and I can't say it. So to. Uh, I haven't missed one episode of the Stone Roadie podcast, so I've watched every episode. Some of them more than once. So to uh, to Craig, Griff, Kathy, Otto, and um, Chad, and everybody that's made the podcast possible, and all the guests, of course, you know, uh, uh, congratulations on number one hundred. Hey, hey yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. It's we never would have expected to get a hundred, would we? Craig? Never ever dreamed. No. Uh -uh. And then we yeah, didn't even Griff, know. Griff, Griff's some kind. Of, you know, I never thought about doing these. Some so everybody wanted me to write a book. I went, yeah, I'm going to write a book. And then <laughs> some guy, some guy said, well, do a podcast. I said, what do I need to do a podcast? He said, a microphone and a camera. I said, well. I'll do that. So then I got that hit. He was from Music Explorer magazine. So I got the mic and camera, and then he got COVID and backed out, about died or something. I ain't heard back from him. He said he said he'd get back with me not long ago. But then I and then I was, you know, me and Griff are friends. I said, Man, I got this mic and this camera, and this guy backed out. Now I got all this money in this. He goes, Well, I got a mic and a camera. Let me interview you. I can interview you. And I said, yeah, let's just roll with it, you know? So, yeah, no, I, I never, never imagined we'd be up to 100, you know? It's kind of but Man, amazing. huge congratulations, man. I'm glad, you know, I'm glad to see you're out there. For, for us who are our age or whatever, it's, it's a good thing to be doing anything. Yeah, that's true, you know? <clears throat> and then the other thing, too, is that um, – people were asking because they found out when we got monetized, you know, what are you doing with the money? You know? And so we said, well, we'll just donate it to the survivors. Right. And so then, then Craig was, was telling people cause they were wanting to donate money out of their pocket. And he's like, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And then I think they were sending him money anyway. And then Craig's like, well, okay. And so and now, uh, you know, like eighteen thousand dollars later, we we've we've been able to help them out, and people keep sending uh stuff in. Are you driving, Chad? Yeah, I'm trying to turn this damn thing down. <clears throat> so Chad gets that from his dad, you know, driving while he's <laughs> while he's watching TV. You know, no respect for the law. <laughs> you know, he's a private investigator, Andy. <laughs> really yeah he's a he's a, he's actually like magnum pi i'll he'll really? call me and he'll go hey man i'm watching this guy I can't talk right now you know he's he's cheating on his wife and i'm trying to figure out where he's, where he's going <laughs> give me his phone number I, I need his phone number. you need oh we'll hook you up. he's a good one too man he's i bet yeah i bet yeah i <laughs> surveillance <laughs> <laughs> we've had a few nemesis on our you know on our ass uh you know they're like uh just like you know batman you know he's got the joker and the riddler you know we've got uh jimmy slicker that's our nemesis and 
So, so Chad, he kind of investigates all these people and, and keeps a tight rein on. Them. <laughs> if they start messing with us too much, you know, he'll, he'll, uh, dial in on them, man, and zero in on them and, uh, expose them. So <laughs> I hear you. You don't want to mess with him either because, you know, he, he, uh, there's video of Chad actually wrestling and punching Ronnie Van Zant when he was a little kid. <laughs> you, ever, you ever seen that, Andy? <laughs> no, so happened, no. Yeah. He was, where was that at, Craig? Wasn't that at the airport? That was at the studio. Yeah. At the Riverside studio. Yeah. Oh, no, that was at the airport. I showed Zach where the, where the, uh, oh, no, there's, that, yeah, that at the airport. Yeah, but there's the, there's there's video of you at, at the at the studio too. Yeah, the Riverside. Hell, every time Chad and uh, Ronnie got together with Chad, that's the first thing he did was starting fighting with Chad. <laughs> you, you know what's funny is I was watching that video and and Ronnie was letting Chad hit him or uh yeah chad hit him in the head and stuff and then leon sneaks and gets a punch in on his head too <laughs> i was like look at leon every that's time funny. every time ronnie came over to our apartment that's the first thing ronnie would do would get down on the floor and wrestle with chad yeah <laughs> so yeah and chad he's kind of a badass i wouldn't mess with him i mean the thing i learned whenever he he took his nose and bent it over sideways because he has no cartilage in it anymore. Great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he, he said, you can punch. He goes, go ahead. Hit me in the nose. Go ahead. And I was like, I'm going to hit you in the nose. He goes, no, it's, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, he, you know, I, I don't think I'd mess with Chad's one of those guys. He don't talk too much about it, but he's not a guy you really want to mess with. And you, you can't go into PI work and not be a badass. You know, that's true. That is true. You, yeah. You're uh, taking your um, life on your hands at times, you know. Yeah. I mean, you'll be talking to him on the phone. You'll hear a gunshot. Well, you know? <laughs> who, who's the guy sitting in the chair with the hat? That's, Me? that's Mitch Scooby. Yeah. That's Mitch Scooby. He's the that's bus the driver. That's the bus, the bus driver to the stars. Yeah, that's the bus driver. He's. <laughs> I was, uh, I worked with, uh, I worked with Craig on. What was it? Let's see, back to the swamp tour is the last time I worked with Craig. How far? How long ago was that? Man, that Craig. What was that? Around ninety-seven, nine? No, two thousand. Really, ninety-nine, two thousand. Yeah, I you had not tell. To tell. He's got some stories to tell, huh? Yeah, he's uh, told some stories about Hank Williams Jr. and Dolly Parton and, you know, uh, Artemis Pyle. He drove Artemis. He even uh, sent me a picture of uh, of him and Artemis. And uh, you you were a big – you had long hair back then, didn't you, Mitch, in that picture? It was like a – you're, you're yeah. somewhat of a hippie. <laughs> yeah, my hair is a little bit – yeah, it was longer. As a matter of fact, there was um, – I got actually got it hanging on the wall back there. I think it's, like, been around for years. So it's sitting up there uh, – Right, right by the door. It's I was standing with Artemis in uh, in front of a uh, Peterbilt truck I drove, and let's see, that was was that with Bad Company back in the back in the eighties, and artists came to hang out one day. Some somebody took that picture of us. Holy cow! Yeah, everybody that you see here is going to be at the uh, monument, except I don't know. Are you going to be able to make it, Andy? I'm I'm trying to. Um, I, I just reconnected with a, a friend from high school. Um, and my second book I'm writing, I, I did a search and found him, and he's a noted art author, and he lives in Gillsburg. Really, that's and he crazy. Me, uh, he, yeah, and he's a uh, he plays with a um, with with a gospel band and a bluegrass band, and and I I met him in high school, and really really nice guy too. But um, I told him I said I'm going to try to make it down for the uh, for the anniversary. Well, bring your guitar, man, because they're going to be you know, playing, uh, people are just going to plug in. It's kind of be kind of like uh, a little bit like Whitey's. I think, uh, Zach, I think he's going to bring his guitar and, uh, you know, then we're going to sit around and have a little acoustic fun. That sounds and, uh, fun. Yeah. That sounds like fun. And I know you do that. You know, you still, you still do that. Are you still, yeah, I, you, play, I played last night and I'm playing tonight. Yeah. What, what all kind of music you playing, Andy? Man, I, I am the king of bastardizing songs. Okay. I started doing this about 18 years ago because um, 
I just got sick of working with local musicians. I just I've did, sent you a link three times. You're the four oh seven. Are you like a, a one man band? You got a looper and you, is that how no, no, you do no, no. it? I, I just do everything on, on guitar. It's like it's all percussion and and um and uh chords and then yeah, just I see, I see it. It's kind of weird phrasing. There's there's some videos online you can kind of check out what I'm doing, but um I, I just I got bored. I, I just I was so used to growing up with, you know, being in a band it meant camaraderie and like a brotherhood type thing. And uh, over the last 20, 25, 30 years, the musicians have just gotten real bad yeah, about not wanting like to rehearse video. anymore. Um, most of them are playing in four or five bands and they're all doing the same set list. And, you know, it, I just didn't want to be a part of that. So I started doing this solo acoustic thing. And next thing you know, I just started picking the weirdest songs and just, and just basically just kind of rearranging them, making my own or whatever. And so 18 years later, I'm still doing, you know, the same thing. I'm still trying to get pretty good at it, but um, I'm, I'm a work in progress. Well, Zach, remember, uh, start practicing that barroom blitz because uh, Andy, that's his, <laughs> that's hey, his forte. There's Billy right Fender. <laughs> hey, there's hey, Billy Mr. Fender. What's up, girl? Hey, Billy, how's it going, man? You guys Zach, doing how, how, there's okay. Billy Zach. There's Billy Fender. He's the one that built that Blackie. How'd you like Blackie? I liked it, man. It sounded good. Played good. I got good video guitar. of that uh, Billy of Zach playing Blackie up there, and he was doing Sweet Home. And what else did you play with Blackie? Pride, Pride and Joy. Pride and Joy. Oh, yeah. Uh, nice. It would be Zach, man. I'll get. I'll hook you up, brother. He was wanting to know what strings you had on there. Actually, I got uh, Super Slinkies on there. Yeah, he said they were. He said they were slinky. Yeah, he's uh, he's used to playing tens, so um, they're you know, regular slinky. So he uh, when he first picked it up, he went to bend on the high E string, and I think it went over the top of the fretboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, BB King once said uh, he told Billy Gibbons, "Why you got such heavy strings? You're working too hard." Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he was, super slinkies are extra slinky. He told me he he said, "Griff, you're not getting this guitar back, you know, because I gave it to Otto. I was getting want to give it to Otto to run it up to Craig so we could auction it off." And then and he goes, "I like it too much. I think I'm going to keep it." So he <laughs> hid it in his in his equipment truck. But oh we had boy, to, we pried it out of his hands. Man, all those all those great players like you know Billy Gibbons and Stevie Ray Vaughan and a lot of the blues players. Man, they use the heaviest strings. Yeah, like, he did. Like sometimes a twelve or a thirteen for a little e, uh, you know. But but their their finger, I mean, their hands were like like just like lumberjacks. I mean, they're just like really <laughs> strong. Hands, you know. Yeah, well, I don't like to work as hard. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. Yeah, we well, we put it. We put it on the trailer after the uh, the show, and we tried to hide it. And they come, <laughs> you know, Griff and Otto came on the trailer and like. You know the stage is empty. Where's where's the where's Blackie? And we just said, I don't know what you're talking about. So <laughs> they found it. They found it. Well, you know, you can hear exactly. Oops, Zach playing it, and it sounds so phenomenal. So we'll 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 have a little jump drive in there on the deal of Zach playing it when Craig auctions it off, and and uh, then uh, that way they can hear it being played like it needs to be played. You know, so it's pretty. Yeah, I'd cool. like to see that video definitely. So yeah, go to uh, go to Griff Martin files, and I'll I'll put it up there. It's uh, okay. you guys can see it. That black strat. It's a it's a telly telly strat. So the yeah. bus driver's name is Mitch. Is that right? Yeah, Mitch Scooby. Yes, Mitch. Did That's you correct. did you ever hear stories about Sammy Ammons? Uh there is a handful of Sandys that I worked with over the years, but I can't put Ammons on the back of it. No, he was a, this was Sammy. He was a bus driver for Skinner back when at 75. Oh, he is he the guy oh. Sam that Ronnie wore Sam on his shirt? Yeah, I mean, that's him, yeah. Yeah, really, yeah. really big guy. Just a huge, huge monster of a guy. He yeah, he, was, he was on he was on the Gimme Back My Bullets uh album on the photo shoot in the That's in, right. Yeah, he was yeah, he yeah. was. But he, okay. he, no, he, no, I didn't, didn't know him. He was the most magnificent liar I've ever met in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. He 
I made the trip from Memphis to Tampa to do the Tampa Jam in uh, August of 75. And he had more lies and stories about having sex with huge country music stars and all these girls. <laughs> he, he claimed to have been with everybody. And he, he went into graphic detail about every girl, every country, female country star he was with. And oh my God, it was hysterical. Is yeah. he still around? Uh, he, there's no way. There, there's no, no way. it no. couldn't be. No, there's, he had there's to be a few in his 50s then. Oh, okay. <laughs> He came. He pulled up to get me when I was at the storage place working. We were uh, loading up the stuff, I think. And he pulled up to get me. And as soon as he turned the corner, I had just gotten into it with Joe Osborne, and I oh, had wow. I had <laughs> Joe pinned up against the door and had him by the throat, and I was about <laughs> to start pounding on him. And then Sammy made the corner of that bus and pulled up. And he got out, smiled, and said, "What the hell are you doing, Andy? You gonna hurt Joe?" <laughs> but Joe had pushed me a little bit too far at that point, I think. And Chad, what what is uh, Joe's nickname again? Bullet. What? What what is Joe Joe Barnes' nickname again? Goosh. Goosh. Yeah. Goosh. Yeah. yeah. Goosh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm having a hard I'm having a hard time hearing you guys. I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> How did he get that name, Goosh? Goosh. Yeah, uh, I think. Uh, uh, I think Bob Burns gave gave him that name Goosh. Go, either Bob or, or Leon gave him that name. We just talked. We I just spoke with him um, back in the summer. I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he was at Whitey's. I did an interview with him, and we were talking about how he got started with uh, Ronnie, and then he doesn't like to talk about how he. He almost got thrown off the plane when it was at 5,000 feet in the air. <laughs> uh, Ronnie tried to drag him down the aisle and throw him and open the door and everybody jumped on Ronnie and said, no, man, don't, don't throw goosh off. Yeah. Mur murder would have been a bad, a bad idea. I think. <laughs> he actually bit, he bit Joe on the stomach and took a hunk of meat out of his stomach and, yeah. And and Joe said, "I'll show you the scar." And I said, "Yeah, man, I might want to take a picture of that." Yeah, he works, <clears> for, <throat> works for the IRS now. Yeah, he's he's a cool guy, man. He's he is, got a lot of great stories, and he was telling the story about how he uh, had to make the cords up so they could get out on the tongue. You know, uh, um, Nebworth at the Nebworth concert. You know when they weren't supposed to go out on the tongue. And he said he didn't have enough cord for Leon and Leon bottomed out before he could get down to the bottom of it. So it was a, what, what, uh, what, what, uh, episode was that Kathy, the whiteys episode? Do you have that written down anywhere? Um, no, it was just in February. Correct. Oh yeah. That's after yeah. 50. Yeah. Yeah. It was after 50. So it was the it was the episode when uh, we when they had the uh, Gary Rossington celebration of life at Whitey's and uh, yeah. I did an interview with uh, Goosh yeah. Joe Barnes a really good good interview with him he's he's a colorful guy yeah yeah I like Joe he's a good guy well I guess you guys what what was the argument about when you had him pinned up against the wall Joe. Um... I respected him uh, as far as his knowledge of audio and um, where he had been. He was one of the original guys that started with Shoko back in the 60s. You know, and I admired him for, um, you know, for everything he had done in his life. But he was a belligerent asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Chad? <laughs> no, he was Joe, Joe Osborne. I mean, he, he was uh, he was opinionated to a fault. That's why rock and roll audio got fired because Joe argued with Kevin all the time about oh. sex, you know, and, and, and Kevin gave Joe the option to start flying the system to make a system they could fly, you know, because that was the wave of the future basically. And we had gone to see bad company in uh, three river stadium in Pittsburgh and Shoto was doing the sound for him, and that was that's the first time I ever saw anybody flying the system. And it made sense, I mean, from a money standpoint, I mean, because it opened up the arena. You just everybody could see, you know, you sell a lot, a lot more tickets or whatever. But Joe thought the the PA should stay on the stage, 
He thought it projected better. He thought the base response would be better. And they just argued all the time about it. And I think Kevin got sick of it. And so eventually they, they got rid of us. You know, I don't blame them for doing it. I really don't. But that's kind of the way that went down. But Joe was just um, – he could be belligerent. He could be arrogant. And um, just he would argue with a rock. I mean, just, you know, just one of those type of guys. And, and he had pushed me that day just a little bit too far. He just got too abrasive. And um, I was – let me see, I'm 6'4". I think Joe was maybe – maybe five, nine, maybe, and, and kind of thin, you know, <coughs> wiry kind of guy, you know, and I just had enough of it, you know, and I just turned around and grabbed him by the throat, <laughs> pushed him up against one of those storage doors, you know, and held him up. And I was about to start pummeling him. I mean, but Sammy rounded the corner at the time. And so I just backed off and Kenny Roberts was there and Kenny was saying, Andy, don't do it. Don't do it. You know, I said, well, you know, okay. And so. Well, the reason he almost got thrown off the plane, and Craig could probably tell it better than me, but he threw Ronnie's portable bar away because the well, wheel. We're talking broke. about two different people. You're talking about Joe Osborne. Oh, I got Joe okay. Barnes. Okay. Joe Osborne ran Joe Shoko. Gotcha. Uh, Joe Osborne started at Shoko. Joe yeah. Barnes. Yeah, sorry about that mix up. Yeah, that's, that's okay. yeah. no problem. Yeah. Now, I know me and Joe were good friends. I mean, when J Joe got deathly ill, we did some shows up in the Northeast in Canada when I the first like mini tour I did with them. Right. Uh, that was in like January, I think of 75 freezing cold. I had never felt cold like that before. And, um, the last show we did was at the, um, a theater in orange, New Jersey, I think with Eric Burden opening, you know, and we were driving home from that show and Joe got deathly ill and had to be hospitalized. We had to pull into a hospital and take him inside. And I, I stayed inside with him while everybody else was asleep on the bus. And but he's he's a good guy. I mean, he's just he's a genuinely good person. Yeah, he was on the plane too, right, Craig? He he's was on the plane. plane. Yeah. He, uh, Joe Joe was kind of Joe would, you know, the band kind of tried to um you know uh, be cordial to all the 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 tribute band I'm talking about, tried to be cordial to all the the, the survivors that would show up at the, at the shows, but Joe was one of the people that they didn't really care to see before the uh, before they did a show. Joe would you know come back and you know just talk about things that you know just really weren't appropriate before a show. So they you know they didn't really care to see joe at, at a show you know they go oh god you know you know yeah just to straighten things out i got joe barnes and joe osborne mixed up joe barnes he was the original roadie for uh he's one of them yeah yeah and then osborne he's the guy you're talking about yeah i never yeah. i never met him no i never and met joe, him. joe osborne i heard his sister just passed away not long ago too oh really yeah. I I didn't know that because I was just talking to her not that long ago. Yeah, I wow. heard that she just passed away not long ago. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Um, uh, did you ever have anything to do with Paul Welch, Andy? No, mm -mm. that's after no. my. Yeah. 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 He. Yeah. He. Uh, no. You know. He. He was uh, uh, a pretty big part. You know. I, I did that interview with him at the at the uh, Rockin' for a Reason thing too. That was a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Andy. Andy was with the uh, original, original Leonard Skinner. Yeah, with uh, the, the Rock and Roll Audio was uh, was our first PA company that we we went we took out on a on a major tour and and we had that company for how a couple years, Andy, year and a half or so. I started with you in seventy three. That was, that's right in the 73 they were based out of memphis and um yeah I wonder, it had to be like 73 when you were i think uh some of the first headlining shows you did i think well the, actually it was af after 74 actually 73 was the who tour so it was actually the january ja january 1st 1974 is when i started and that was right after the Who tour, and and I believe Rock and Roll Audio started, you know, at, right after that. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, that yeah. sounds. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, and then they were they they were our 
PA company, uh, like you said, right up until uh, we picked up Shoko. And that was in August of uh, 75 because you, the band was going to Europe after that Tampa Jam. They were going to do a couple shows in the Northeast, and, that, and that's when Shoko was first starting with them. Then they were going to Europe, and that's when they did the um, – the uh, old gray whistle show, I think, or whatever, you know, I think that would have been like, uh, maybe the old gray whistle test. Yeah. Old gray whistle test, Right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that would have been around that time. Joe was just, I mean, he was just an obstinate person. I mean, he's one of those people you say black, he says white, you say, you say blue, he says red. I mean, it's just, he's just, <laughs> he's, you know, and, but he could be a really, really sweet person when he wanted to be. I mean, he could be a, he, he was, he was married, to a saint, I mean, he was married to this. This I can't, I can't remember her name. She died. Melissa, before. Melissa. Good, yeah, yeah, Melissa, Melissa, Melissa. Sweetheart, man. And I asked her a few times. I said, "How do you deal with him?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, "I don't, I don't get that at all." She, she did. She had the patience of a saint. I actually gave his sister some money, um, and she gave me a re some recordings <laughs> that, that Joe Osborne did. I have a disc of some recordings of some Leonard Skinner, uh, uh, and I forget where they, what concert it was, but it's an original. I think I told you about that, Craig, and then I, I still have it somewhere. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll put that up on the, on the, uh, Griff Martin files here. I'll dig that out and put that up. Uh, I don't think it's worth anything. And and Mitch, uh, I believe Shoko had kind of like the first bus that was actually a tour bus that was for rent because um, we had it, and it was a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 we we ended up having to. Um, take taxis to the airport and fly a whole bunch of times because that bus would break down and uh yeah they got out of the bus business but i've uh, from what you know there were other bands you know that 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 toured on buses but i think shoko was like the first one of the first ones that you know was leasing buses anyways because we had it and it was a piece of crap <laughs> that tour that you that tour the first that mini tour i did with you guys the first time that was in a winnebago we had like 11 guys in a, in a winnebago yeah, the the bad wow. box band remember that we had, <laughs> that's it yeah that right. was the winnebago that was the that was the that was the Winnebago. We called it the Bad Box, and we had a band called the Bad Box Band. That's right. And yeah. K, K Boy was the singer, and we and we would and I was the drummer, and we and, 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 and K Boy. I remember the song he used to sing. I'm in the mass murder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the mass murder, baby. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> I remember I was sitting up. I can't house. stick you with my knife. I'll shoot you with my gun or something. Like that. <laughs> I remember I had never driven a Winnebago before, and I had crawled to go sleep. And um, Kevin says, Kevin was driving, I think, and he says, um, he said, Andy, you need to take over. <laughs> and I looked at him. I said, I've never driven one of these things before. He said, no different than driving a truck. I said, I've never driven a truck before either. He said, well, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. He said, he said, if you need, uh, if you need gas, it's on this side of the window. Of the he said, just, just let me know. And I'll give you a credit card. And I said, okay. And I was terrified. I was going like 35, 40 miles an hour down the interstate and that thing. I had, I had a piece of foam, foam rubber, big piece of foam rubber that I that I put up on the counter where the sink was, and that's where I slept. <laughs> and that was like all those guys. It's like, you know, <laughs> it's to high heaven. I mean, after about a <laughs> it's, it's, you know, nothing worse than like twelve road crew guys, you know. <laughs> but, you know, but that was you know what that that period of time, um, Shoko also was one of the first companies to buy their own trucks. And uh, they bought a handful of cab over uh, Fords, and they ran them for quite a while before the truck actual trucking company started to do nothing but touring. So that was a, a real interesting period. And the the buses back then, I mean, you had a few guys. You had uh, 
Milo and a few other people out of Connecticut in the Northeast that had just started getting into leasing buses out for and building inter, you know, entertainer coaches, if you wanted to call it that, back in that period of time. So it was kind of neat, and there were, you know, there were no requirements. So if the driver got sick or stoned or drunk, you know, you could throw anybody behind the wheel and you know, get them to the next gig. It was kind of a kind of an interesting period of time because there was no standard for uh, there. There's a standard for touring. It was it was you know trucks or rail cars and and other means, but that was the start of the whole you know uh, touring industry picking up speed. You know, Jay that, Boy, that may that may have been the bus that we had from Shoko that went through the bank. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> the one that 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 got away that was at the hotel and got away and rolled down the hill and went through the bank through the drive through <laughs> and it was in the paper but rock band rocks but band rocks bank or something like that was the headline it may have been that buzz i'm i'm not sure i was uh, gonna ask you craig if that would have been the the same bus because uh in it, on the uh, documentary, the movie, if I leave here tomorrow, you know, one minute, you know, um, Ed is talking about, he's not, <laughs> he doesn't like the, uh, the violence and the, um, the destruction of the hotel rooms and things. And then like, you know, a couple minutes later, he talks about that bus, you know, um, yeah, I remember crashing that, yeah. into the bank. And he said, that was intentional. <laughs> and he said, I thought that was funny as hell. He said, yeah, maybe I'm a hypocrite. Maybe I did like some destruction. So that, was, yeah. so that, that, that may have been the buzz. Yeah. yeah. Craig, Chad, uh, Chad Lane. He's kind of like Joe Crimp. He's got this photographic memory. He can remember all of that stuff. He needs to be kind of like our research guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, you know, you know, Chad, Chad kind of, you know, found Zach on, on TikTok and he went, dad, you got to hear this kid on TikTok, man. He's like emulates Gary and Alan to the T, you know, and I started watching him, you know, and then I got on the podcast and I, and then that, that's when I said, man, this kid, Jack Link. <laughs> and that's yeah. what Chad Chad says he's watched every podcast and it's true. I, I said, man, this kid Jack Link and and he, and I started talking about it and, and Chad was going, wait a minute, he's gotta be talking about Zach, you know? And he goes, Yeah, he is talking about Zach. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, how how that kind of went down was um like I said, I've watched every, I haven't missed a single podcast and I was just, you know, sitting on the couch watching one as normal. And, uh, Craig had mentioned, had brought it up this, uh, this young kid that, uh, Chad, you know, his son, Chad brought up to him, um, that played that looked a lot like Gary and, and looked somewhat a little bit like Alan at times. And I'm thinking, Whoa, you know, that that's kind of it's adding up a little bit. And then he says, and he just done a video with him playing. I think it was, it was calm, calm, me the calm, breeze. calm me the breeze. And he was playing it barefooted. So, um, you know, he, he really never comes out here barefooted, but he did that one day. And, and I knew that. And, um, and he said, and Craig said, I, his name is Jack Link. And I said, whoa, 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 this is, this is too, <laughs> too good to be true. So I immediately, I think you were out here working on a song at the time or working uh, on something. Song, so I come out yeah. and I said, man, I said, come in here and watch this. I said, this cannot be just coincidence. And lo, uh, you know, lo and behold, I think you reached out I, to No, somebody. what I did, I made a Facebook post saying, Craig Reed, were you talking about me on the podcast last night? <laughs> And, uh, and, and yeah, yeah, it turned out to be true. That's who you were talking about. So, me. Yeah. i tell you what's funny so, is when you, I was Chad. at Chad and Zach's house and up there when I was staying with him and, and Chad goes, do you ever go back and watch the podcast? And I go, well, I really don't have time. And he goes, you, you sit down. We're going to watch this one <laughs> yeah. here. And it was me and Kathy Godsey and Gene Odom and Craig. Right. <laughs> and, uh, he was, and Gene was telling the story about how the mosquito bit Craig on the shoulder and it, and it got so high that it flew into the wall <laughs> and, yeah. and fell on the ground and died. <laughs> and we were laughing so hard. We couldn't even breathe. It was hilarious. It was, it was, you guys got to go watch that one. Yeah, Which one was that, Kathy? 
that's the one that has almost 10,000 views. That's 28. Yeah. 28. Oh my God. Yeah. 28. That is hilarious. Yeah. You guys got to yeah. watch that. It's 28. And I think it's somewhere around, it's 30 some minutes into it. I believe I, I'm wanting to say it's 38 minutes into it when he starts talking about that. And it is just, that is a great episode, a great podcast, but that yeah. is hilarious. I mean, I, I, we, I watched it and I kept rewinding it because if you watch Gene tell the story and then look at Craig, he kind of starts, he turns his head and starts listening. And then the grief looks like he's looking right now. It's just, you. I was laughing over and over. So it was, yeah, that was a great one. Yeah. And then Gene that. says, I, I swear to God on, 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 Ronnie, Van's, on Ronnie Van Zant's grave. And, uh, and then I said, oh, I believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, and a mosquito landed right there and went zoom straight into the door. He said it was it was smashed. And <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious. You got to yeah, watch. He, that one. Yeah, he had a probably a, a a mixture of of things in his blood <laughs> at the time. <laughs> hey, Andy, what wasn't it you that? Um, yeah, you were in the hotel. And Ronnie came in and he heard you playing guitar and he said, you need to quit being a roadie and you need to go, you need to go and, uh, and start following your musician, uh, trade, didn't he? Yeah, it was him and Gary, right. They, they've been out partying at a club and when they came back and me and a guy named Bob O'Neill, who was the lighting guy, we were sitting on the bed singing Neil Young songs and, and, and drinking and, and getting stoned and, and next thing I know, there's a knock on the door, and Bob got up and uh, answered it. And Ronnie and Jerry walked in, and you know said, "Who was who that?" Sing? Ronnie said, "Who was that singing?" Bob said, "That's Andy." And um, he, they sat down on the bed next to me, and they asked me a couple of questions: How long you've been singing? How long you've been playing? Whatever. And Ronnie said, "You got any originals?" And I said, "Yeah, I've got a couple." You know, and so I played this one called "I'm Trying," and. Um, he fell in love with it and we, we had talked about possible publishing deals and that sort of thing. Of course, I didn't, I didn't know what publishing was at the time. I'm like, I'm 21 years old, maybe I think. And so, but anyway, that's, that's kind of like, that was the first validation I ever had yeah. from anybody that meant anything. And then he saw you in the airport and you were still doing the roadie thing. And I think he fired you or something, told you to go. We got, quit fired, doing. Airport. We got fired at the temp. Yeah. Because, <clears throat> Joe and Kenny showed up late. And so Kevin came to me and said, he said, he said, it's getting late, Andy. We need to get this PA set up. I said, you want me to do it by myself? He said, yeah. I said, we just get it rolling, you know? And so, um, so I started telling the stage hands, you know, just where to put stuff and, and helping them. So we got it all pretty much up and running almost. And then Joe and Kenny shows up and Joe threw a fit. I, I mean, just went ballistic that we had the audacity to set his PA system up before he got there. You know, of course I tried to reach with him. I told him, I said, man, I said, I said, I said, listen, man, it's too late. I said, and, and I said, I didn't want to be last minute Joe here or anything. So I said, you know, uh, Kevin told me to set it up and I did, you know, of course he tore into me that I had this wrong, this was wrong, this goes here. And, you know, and, that's that's kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back, I think, at that point. So they, I think they fired us on the spot. Of course, they were probably already planning to do that because of what we talked about earlier. Do you still play bass? I just um, – a friend of mine just gave me a, a 1971 Fender P bass. Nice. And um, I've been sitting around the house playing it, and, and people keep asking me to, to get out and play some, but – I'm not really motivated to do that yet. I've got too much on the plate right now. I'm just, I want to finish his second book and get the first book out before I do anything else. And uh, people are after me about doing another CD and, um, you know, I don't know. It's, I just have too much on my plate right now to be thinking about playing bass in a band. Yeah. Hey, hey, Billy Fender, man. Uh, you, you're working on a new guitar, huh? I am. I got a few of them going. Yeah. Uh, this morning i've been trying to find some alligator skin but it seems to be here nor there nobody can come up with it yeah I want to <laughs> cover a guitar with alligators yeah craig you could tell that story about uh that guy he was like 
we we the guy where uh zach i got zach strap and that's a really cool alligator strap and and he was going to donate something then he got pissed off and he said something about if the if the uh leonard skinner band can't help donate something then i ain't donating anything and that what he said craig he said uh <clears throat> i i um from what Billy said, the guy the guy said, uh, you know, uh, I kind of had second thoughts about it, and uh, and those guys are, you know, those guys are still selling records, and they're still making millions of dollars, and if anybody should be donating to the those survivors that were on that plane, it should be should be them and not me. Yeah, something to that. Effect. He went off on. Me. Good. <laughs> oh, he went off on you? Oh, yeah. He went off on me big time. And, and I, 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 I said, there, there's none of them left. He said, well, the families should be taking care of those survivors. I said, dude, I, I said, I don't want to get in the middle of this. I said, I the alligators getting from you. And he, I'll tell he, you what, come oh, to the anniversary in Gillsburg. There's lots of alligators down there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. around the idea about showing up up there or over there they just found the largest alligator in on record in uh in mississippi in yazoo city wow this really maybe, about maybe a month ago i think something like that the largest alligator on record in the state of mississippi was found in yazoo city just see if you can get some skin from them when you <clears throat> there you go oh there you go. Well, Craig's belt came from Disney World, the uh, the lakes out in Disney World. Oh, my wallet. Gator. My your wallet. wallet. Yeah, your wallet. Oh, 11 yeah. foot, 11 foot gator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How you liking that strap, Zach? Is it, is it breaking in nice? Oh yeah. Yeah. It feels great. I see a lot of people were commenting on that on YouTube about that strap, man, they, that, uh, Zach, you know, he, Zach's one of these guys, if he don't like it, man, he's going to tell you. So he really, he really <laughs> likes it. Good. Another thing about Zach too, he's got this great ear you know, I was, we were playing guitar and we were sitting around playing. And if you hit a bad note, Zach turns around and looks at you like, what the hell was that, man? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this this kid here has got an ear, man. I, I'm not kidding. He's like Keep that you know. attitude. Don't 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 water that down. Keep that attitude. <laughs> That's oh. right. He needs that attitude. He does. That's standard he, high, okay. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but uh, at the end of this, when we get into the uh, the thing before uh, Joey Davis, there's a little surprise with. Uh, Chad and Zach Lane and and Griff redoing uh, uh, um, Richmond from Richmond. Yeah, Richmond well, North of Richmond. Rich, Richmond North of Richmond. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that was fun. We uh, it's actually um, Zach was playing it. He started playing it, you know, and I said wow man i said that sounds pretty good and, he, and it was just like three chords right you know and then uh and then we, so we started messing around with it and then and i said well heck man let's do it you know and so we worked on it for a couple hours and and we about gave up one time and and then, and then we said wow well, we'll just go ahead and finish it and then it just all came together and uh and yeah it turned i think it turned out pretty good actually right where those guys are sitting is where we did it yeah. so so you guys stay tuned because that's going to be on the uh, on the road with Griff Martin after this, and yeah. and I, I really enjoyed that. And uh, Zach puts a nice little lead riff in there, and and Chad sings it a really good version of it. And uh, so yeah, I think uh, you guys let us know what you think of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. go easy on us, not too hard. Yeah. Though. We were just, yeah, we had fun doing it, and we're. Uh, Griff just did the interview with uh, Joey Davis. We thought, you know, we would try to pay homage to the song because it's, you know, it's a good song. And um, like uh, Griff said, we would, he, uh, Zach just started playing it, you know, that evening and, uh, or the night before. And we thought, why not kind of to pay homage and you got to, you know, him, him coming up, uh, his interview on this podcast and, 
Um, all of us just sitting here wanting to play a little bit. So we just had fun with it and hope you hope you guys like it. But <laughs> take it easy on us. We're I am by no means no uh, Oliver Anthony. So um but but yeah. That's who we need to get the feedback from is is Christopher Lunsford, Oliver Anthony. That's who we need to get the feedback from. Craig liked it though. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If Craig likes it, then, you know, I mean, that's pretty, pretty hard picking right there. Craig will pick anything to death. Craig said it didn't suck. <laughs> yeah, it didn't yeah. suck. Yeah. yeah. If he says it didn't suck, that's a nice way of saying, you know, it's, it's okay. Just, uh, I'll just tell you what, I listen, uh, automotive was over here the other day and I was just kind of piddling around and he was on his phone with, with, uh, some recording and that he, did with y'all and i was listening to it and i i, I kind of turned around and realized that that was y'all and i went you gotta be freaking kidding me man yeah, so i just like it don't occur and, and i'm going and what surprises me is the most is savannah's playing bass you know and it's only been like a year and a half when she was couldn't even play you know i'm going you know, and, and, that, and that Smick, Smick is like <laughs> dialing in, man. He's like freaking, you know, these guys are oh, tight. Right. I mean, she, you guys are know. real. I mean, Chad, man, you ain't no chump, man. I mean, <laughs> you, you, you really do a good job singing Ronnie's stuff. You really do. I mean, you really, I mean, it, it's, it's incredible. It's, I've, you know, best best Leonard Skinner tribute band I've ever heard and y'all ain't even a Leonard Skinner tribute band it's it's, it's incredible and it's uh, what's amazing is Savannah's playing bass and I mean yeah. I sat right there next I sat right there right next to Leon's rig man and I know I I know all of his stuff and you know, she don't play it exactly, but she's, you know, she, she, you know, she, she show, you know, she, she doesn't. Oh, she's very close. Yeah. She, 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 she does it justice, you know? Yeah. And Steve, their drummer, I didn't realize till. Oh Chad my God. Told me. He's like 51 years old. I thought he was in 30. I thought he was know? 30. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, just, just turn. Yeah, you got your very good oh, band, man. man. Y'all thinking about doing any originals or anything like doing a CD or if you're talking? Yeah, yeah that's, that's uh, we we have one original right now. We actually we got a couple more in the bucket that we uh, hopefully may get recorded. So, man, keep me in the loop on that. I'd love to hear them. I actually wrote one and, and Zach, it was kind of started off funny. And now we're like, seriously, they're seriously thinking about it. So, yeah. yeah so, uh, you know, hopefully we can hear that too. Um, kind of crazy a little yeah, craig, well craig thanks you know for those uh comments if there's anybody you know i mean you were sitting right there with those guys and um you know just like you said we're not trying to be a tribute band or trying to be them we're just trying to do the music right so that um it keeps you know <clears throat> on a local level the live you know music alive and um yeah it's um you know i as far as you know doing ronnie stuff um anytime you know i don't i don't think i do that well with it i just try to do the best i can but uh, hey if at any point in time if ronnie's name and mine can be in the same sentence it's uh you know it's 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 um humbling to hear um but as far as like savannah you know she she's just been here what month and a half month and a half yeah. or something so not long she's kind of she came on you know with a, a 30 song set you know looking at her so um yeah. she's kind of working in and like every time we hear her play at rehearsal or or the shows she's more closer to doing like you guys were talking about leon's parts exactly it's just you know just going back and okay well i know that i need to do this here or there and she's <laughs> she's doing so good with it well she's only like 18 and she hasn't been playing that long 17 she's 17 right 17 now. yeah just <clears throat> unbelievable you know and um talking about the recording uh i i think uh i would like for zach and chad to talk about something coming up this coming weekend that is that is very very good stuff yeah if you guys can talk about it, i didn't t i just touched on it a little bit but yeah if you can elaborate on that 
Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, next, uh, let's see, next Tuesday. Well, it's this coming. So, yeah, today, Saturday. So, yeah, check this out, Friday. Andy, what they're getting ready to tell you about. This coming Friday, I guess we'll be leaving. And can yeah. you hear us, Chad? Yeah, I can, I can hear you. I'm getting ready okay. to get off. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, go ahead. Tell uh, them but, know. yeah, so we'll be going to Jacksonville and uh, doing some rehearsals uh, for a recording. We're doing, I don't know if any of you all have seen it, Andy or Mitch um, or Billy. We uh, done Getaway at Rockin' for a Reason, the Ross and Collins song. And uh, so we're going to be recording that. And uh, by the grace of God, we got some of the original members of the Ross and Collins band that are actually going to be on. <laughs> no way, really? Yeah. 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 Yep. So. <laughs> Don't really want to let any of the cats out of the bag, <laughs> not you yet, know, not as yet. far as uh, who the uh, original members are, but they're uh, very key players. And yeah. so uh, the, the, the lineup that's doing that is, of course, Zach on guitar and uh, Seda Savannah. Davidson. Yeah, Seda, uh, Seda Davidson, she sang on that uh, that version we did mm -hmm. live at Rockin' for a Reason. And then we got Savannah on bass mm -hmm. and uh, Nick. Uh, the other Smith. guitar player in Six Gun uh, doing Alan Collins' part. So, and uh, yeah. Yeah. So, and one of the big, the big key pe uh, people that's kind of been involved with this project and actually got this started, you know, right after. I mean, we were on our way back home from rocking for a reason, and uh, Chad yeah. called called us and he said, you know, I think this needs to happen. And, yeah. and of course, you know, uh, as uh, just uh, Zachary's support system. And I said, hey, you know, if Zach's on board with it and, you know, you guys can get it worked out and he says, let's go, then then I'm going to, you know, be there. So, um, yeah, so he's been working on it. And there has been some speed bumps, you know, along the way. But he's like, he has really been, you know, behind making this happen. And uh, so, yeah, it's that's getting ready to, to all fold out so you guys – it's going to be good. Stay tuned. Yeah. Very awesome. cool, man. I wish you all the best with that. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. And Chad Reed, man, he's integral in that, setting that all up, man, because uh, those speed bumps, you know, and Chad's the one who irons all that out and gets it back on course. And he's the guy who did the Rockin' for a Reason organization on that. And uh, yeah, Chad's good at that stuff. It must be that private investigator in him or something. I don't know what it is. Well, he he's, knows, he's he like the only one people. that has he's the only one that has connections with those those people with Rossington Collins that were are involved with this too. Yeah. And mm -hmm. also to kind of add to it, um, you know, the uh the people that uh from the original band that um are gonna be doing this, not only are they interested in, you know, the the uh the studio session, but they want to get out at times, you know, when they can and and play with these guys live. So that's that's you know really cool. You know how cool that's, would that be? That's 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 impressive because they haven't done that. Neither one of them. Yeah. Well, you must have inspired them. <clears throat> yeah. Well, you can yeah. uh, go to the the Griff okay. Martin files and look at. You can see Derek Hess is playing drums there, and we're in a in a little practice room in a garage at, at Chad's friend's house, and we're talking tight quarters in there. But that sound, I mean, it just it you know resonates. It's a really great sound, and and then I'm like real up and close and personal on all the instruments, and especially Zach, and, and man, he just knocks it out of the park it's just awesome man just uh being able to stand there and watch it and witnessing this history going on so, so yeah you guys be looking out for that we'll we'll update you on the podcast on that too it's an amazing recreation you know in my opinion that's an amazing recreation well listen man just just some advice for you guys if you're going to emulate gary you need to walk pigeon toad <laughs> 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 I don't know if anybody ever noticed this. If you watch Gary, he, he severely pigeon toed. I think Craig <laughs> is too. Craig's a little pigeon toed. <laughs> Notice Craig being pigeon toed, but Gary, when he walked on stage, every, every time that he would do a solo, he would walk to probably to the left of Ronnie. 
he walked out to the like, closer to the stage, and every time he did, his feet are turned in toward each other. <laughs> it's almost like he's shuffling more than walking. You know? Yeah. If you so want, Zach, you, whenever you do Gary's parts, man, that's you need to remember that. You <laughs> 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 need to make an effort to be pitching toed. Go ahead. <laughs> So, so Mitch, if, uh, if these guys, you know, that's doing this, this recreation and they'll probably get to start writing some of the originals, some original stuff too. If they hit the road, you about ready to get back behind the wheel. <laughs> Hell he'll fly him, man. He's got a, he's got a plane <laughs> and he'll make sure there's gas in it. <laughs> when you guys putting blackie up for sale? Uh, probably tomorrow. I think, yeah, tomorrow. Well, depending on how it goes, and it's up. No, to I was uh, yeah, a guy called me yeah, a couple a couple of days ago. I said, "Man, I didn't miss Blackie, did I?" He goes, "No, no. I just matter of fact, I just got it just a couple of days ago, yeah. and I was gonna I was gonna put it up Thursday for ten days, and I just just couldn't get it together, so I'll put it up tomorrow. So I depending on what you got to do, I actually have enough parts to build." Blackie. Oh yeah. Oh you yeah. You hear that? You hear that, Zach? <clears throat> Zach's <laughs> mouse watering over there, uh, <laughs> Billy. <laughs> actually, in weeks I'll hook you up, Zach. You hear that, actually, Zach? I, I actually, I think Blackie might have got stolen. I don't. I haven't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> I I have a question for Zach. Zach, where did you learn? how to play guitar have you been taking uh, lessons or well at when i was first starting out i kind of uh, was kind of uh learning myself kind of teaching myself certain things but um uh, my uncle his brother actually played guitar and he was uh he actually played in six gun for a little bit but uh he kind of showed me like some chords starting out and i learned from youtube a little bit um, and then eventually mom, um, was like, well, seems like he's kind of taking an interest in it. So, uh, we should probably start getting him some lessons so he can learn more. So, That's so great. I did that for, um, about a year and a half or something. And, um, the guy kind of stopped, uh, teaching. So I was kind of left out in the dry. So I just started learning myself, like teaching myself things and jamming over backing tracks and, you know, um, kind of showing myself the way and um, learning other people's songs as well, you know, covering mm -hmm. songs, whether people realize it or not, cover songs really show you like, you know, how to be your own player because you're learning all these different styles of music. You eventually have your own fingerprint of, you know, That's music. The idea. That's well, the you idea. were, you were playing on TikTok when you were how old or you were playing around and people, people were saying, that's not really him playing. He's, yeah. That yeah, was so, me. I, I thought that. That's, yeah. 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 I started. <laughs> that was Griff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I started TikTok. Um, I think I was 18. I, no. Yeah. 18. I just turned 18. Um, I started TikTok and it didn't really get much traction for the first few videos and then all of a sudden one video got like 10,000 views and I was like I don't know what's happening but I'm going to keep doing it so um so I and the Skinner thing I don't know that that kind of from hmm oh shit. Look like we, oh look like we lost him right in the middle of the good part <laughs> I was going to ask him does anybody know does he play any other instruments or is it just I think yeah, he started. He, I think he started playing drums. Actually, oh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. okay. And I was wondering who were his influences. Like when he was a kid, who did he? Because he's so young, who was he listening to? Like who, who inspired him? Well, Kathy, uh, uh, his dad Chad has always been a huge Leonard Skinner fan. Okay, Jack has completely grown up listening to Skinner music. Okay. So really, I mean, Gary Robinson and Alan Collins is his biggest inspiration ever. They're We're back, back in, Chad. We're back. Yeah, I was just going to ask, what kind of music, as a little kid, what kind of music did you, well, your dad was, um, well, Chad he, was saying your dad was a Skinner fan, but 
what kind of music did you listen to? Um, really well, yeah, you? yeah. Uh, I blame him for my music taste, to be honest, <laughs> because um, I was hearing anything from Metallica to yeah. Guns N' Roses, ACDC, ZZ Top, you know, just a bunch of different bands like that. And uh, I think it just kind of became a part of me. Um, yeah. I never really, I had a few phases where I liked country music and liked, um, that was the only phase I kind of had was country. You know, I never had like a, a, a rap phase or anything like that. But, <laughs> Thank uh, God. Yeah. Um, I don't think yeah. Chad would have let you have that phase. I don't think so, no, 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 no. So, so, Zach, do you, um, do you play any uh, Guns N' Roses songs yeah. or Nirvana? I do. You do. Yeah. What do you play? What Guns N' Roses songs do you play? Um, actually, GNR was it, that they were to me kind of like the the perfect rock and roll band, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Skinner being second, um, but <laughs> Slash was Slash was the guy that got me into playing a Les Paul and you know growing my hair out long and trying to be cool when I'm really not, and <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, yeah, I love Guns N' Roses. I play, you know, <laughs> I've learned. <clears throat> pretty much most of Appetite for Destruction. Oh, so, wow. Um, yeah, yeah. Love it. He's a really nice guy, too. He's, he's really down to earth. Oh, really? Person. He came and saw our band play in Honey in uh, Laguna Beach back in May, cool. nine, maybe. Uh, just a really down to earth guy. And just, uh, it's just like you're talking to somebody you grew up with almost. Yeah. Wow. Slash, you're referring to? Actually, he's really yeah cool. yeah that's what i heard he's a really really nice guy and there was something on facebook last week that he left a 50 dollars tip at a yeah. for a waiter at the waffle hundred dollar tip it was a hundred dollar hundred dollar tip yeah he's like a really nice guy it sounds like auto <laughs> <laughs> well i want to see some of your guns and roses stuff you got to send me some stuff because i love guns and roses. i will absolutely, absolutely. yeah and Nirvana too. Did you do any Nirvana? Yeah, yeah. Actually, oh, I've, wow. I've done. I done actually one video. It didn't do very well. I think because I chose "Smells Like Teen Spirit," the most popular one. I think yeah. it was too popular. People don't like to hear that song anymore. But um, but yeah, that's the only one I've done. But I I actually had a Nirvana phase back in middle school where I just it's I loved Nirvana. Cobain was a genius. He was brilliant. Yeah, he was. yeah, he was. Really you know, good songwriter. You know what, guys? People send me these clips all the time of these young kids, you know, that, that are doing uh, all this classic rock stuff, you know. And I, I watch it and I listen to it, and I'm impressed that they have the, the innovation to, to actually tackle something like that. These are young kids, too, like eight, nine years old, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that keeps going through my mind is that they're mimicking. I mean, you know, th there's nothing original about what they're doing. They are mimicking verbatim yeah. what, what happened 20, 30 years ago. What you said about when you listen to um, a variety of people, mm -hmm. and you zero in on their playing, eventually you will top your own style. And, man, keep fanning that flame, too, because that's missing today yeah. um, in a big way. And, and we need more of that, you know. I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've had, you know, of course, Alan and Gary, uh, you know, from Skinner and even Steve and Ed, they're they're a part of me, but not just them. You know, I've got Slash and uh, Angus Young, um, Paul Kossoff, um, you know, Jimmy Page, um, you know, just all the greats. Billy Gibbons, of course, you know, how can I forget? Uh, Eddie Van Halen, Randy Rhodes, you know, all those guys are just Hendrix. Right. I, you know, so many have right. become a part of me. And so I like to think that I've kind of got my own style. Um, uh -huh. Even though I'm ripping everybody off, I've got well, my own Zach, style. Zach, <laughs> that same that thing that Andy just told you is the same thing Ronnie told him. So he's passing that on to you. Isn't that right, Andy? <laughs> well, pretty much. I mean, he yeah. – I mean, Ronnie, man, Ronnie was a very forward-thinking person, man. It's like um, I don't think Ronnie would have ever wanted to be like anybody else. I mean, I, you know, you know, I, I write in the book that you know, don't don't ever make the mistake of thinking that I knew Ronnie very well because I didn't. I, to be honest with you, if I look back on that situation, I think there was maybe four or five people 
that knew Ronnie. I think Craig's one of them. Um, Chuck Flowers maybe was one of them. Uh, Kevin. Um, I don't. I don't even think Ronnie's wife knew him that well, to be honest with you. Oh. Um, but um, you know. But the thing is, I mean, you know, he just made a, a drastic impact on my life because he was the first person of any recognition and fame that ever looked at me and said, "This kid's on to something." You know, and that meant a lot to me because I didn't. Man, I got no love in Memphis at all. None. You know. And I was, I, I needed someone to tell me I was okay, you know, that, I, that you know, I've got potential. I mean, I, I needed that in the worst way. So, yeah, so, so what I'm telling you, man, is just strive for originality. You know, it's missing in music today because we, we've been in a, like a 25, 30 year time war of, of just being, listen, listen to the same songs over and over again, you know, and, and they're great songs and I always love them until I die. But, but the fact is, man, we we really do need more originality and innovation. That that's what's missing today more than anything. So, man, dig deep into that, man, and and stay on that path. Maybe yeah. you can do some Ozark Mountain Daredevil stuff, man. You know, so I I re I remember when 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 I when Ronnie pushed that uh, uh, Fender Twin over on Andy's he uh, Andy's head. And, <laughs> and uh, and then the next thing I know, I was hearing that uh, Andy was a musician, and I never knew it. You know, we'd worked together, but I really never knew he was a uh, guitar singer. You know, whatever. And and then all of a sudden, I hear that uh, Ronnie and Gary are really uh, digging on Andy as a as a musician and stuff. And I'm going, Andy? I said, I didn't know he was a singer or played guitar or anything. It was kind of, kind of, um, you know, kind of cool, you know. Kind of like the same thing that happened with Billy Powell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Joe, man, Joe um, told me I mean, when he offered me the job, the first thing he told me was, he said, what you need to know is um, do your job, do the best you can, and stay away from the band. <laughs> yeah. and, and, order. and I, I thought, I said, why do I need to stay away from the band? He said, he said, don't try to don't try to like get chummy with them. Don't let them know you're a musician. Don't tell them anything. You know, just just do your job, keep your mouth shut, you know. And that's what you and I did. And it was Chuck. It was Chuck Flowers. That told Artemis, well, you know, Andy plays bass. And then Artemis approached me one day. He said, you know, man, he said, I can't stand doing a sound check out there by myself. He said, it would be better for me if I could play with somebody. He said, can you play? I said, I don't I, said, I don't know, maybe a little bit. You know, he said, well, go get your bass and let's try it. You know, and I plugged in the Leon's rig and, um, you know, and, and we started playing like, Oh, this it's like Stanley Clark. I mean, he knew a lot more stuff than I ever imagined, you know, and like all this fusion stuff. And we were playing that sort of thing. And and that happened two or three times. And that, that's where Ronnie and Gary kind of found out about it, you know. And then Leon, Leon got, um, I don't know if he got angry or, or pissed off or whatever, but he told Joe to let me know. I'm not allowed to plug into his rig anymore. <laughs> and I said, well, that's weird, man. I said, because, you know, the one thing I had heard from other people that, you know, Leon quit before they got the record deal. And Ronnie held that against him. Ronnie thought he should have, he was, Ronnie was real big on loyalty from what I understand, that he was just a huge fan of it. And when Leon quit, it, basically Leon was kind of saying, you know, I need to do something else because I don't know if this is going to happen or what. And that's why Ed played bass on that first record. So Leon, they called, Ronnie did not like Ed's playing. Thought he was a better guitar player than he was a bass player. I loved Ed's bass playing, but um, that's just me, you know. But um, but he said, I remember, um, I lost my train of thought. What was I thinking? Asian gravity, man. I'm just, I'm losing it. <laughs> Leon didn't want you to plug into this brig. No, but I, I heard that, you know, every once in a while, Ronnie would, would do a dig at Leon, reminding him that he quit the band when the band was just starting to get signed and starting to break, you know? And um, 
and I think it was a sore spot with him, I think, or whatever. But, you know, that I think that may have been behind that. I'm not really sure. But not like I would ever – I mean, I don't think me joining that band was ever a possibility, you know, <laughs> not a million fucking years. But anyway, but, yeah, there you have it, you know. Zach, you and uh, Andy ought to trade phone numbers, man. He sounds like a good mentor for you there if he's willing to do it, you know. He's uh, got a lot of yeah, knowledge. Andy's, Andy's, a, Andy's a pretty good uh, – person to a uh, soundboard to uh, 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 bounce sound, uh, song ideas off of, you know, come up with hook lines and stuff, you know, it's just, yeah, that's, um, that, that's kind of, uh, how, what do you think about songwriting, Andy? You think, you think uh, writing a hook, coming up with a hook and writing around a hook is easier than kind of writing a story and, then trying to throw a hook in afterwards because you always need that hook. Everybody has their own way of doing it. Um, I was doing this interview recently and they asked me what my method was. Do I start with a guitar line? Do I start with a melody line? Do I start with a hook or whatever? And honestly, every song will start differently. But some people will just sit down and start. I'm sorry. What's happening, man? Some people will just sit down and just play a riff. Like that's how Sweet Home Alabama came about. Yeah, uh, you wanna, what I read, you, you know, what I the phone? Uh, that Gary was playing uh, it. And then Ed picked up and said, well, let's try it like this. Yeah, let me, and then Bonnie starts me writing the lyrics. Like 10 minutes later, it's done. You know, so uh, um, if you can everybody has their own way of doing it. You know, my way varies. I mean, sometimes I just get a line in my head, a, a lyric line or whatever in a melody and then i'll start uh, building on from there but hey i got paul abraham on the phone here and rather than him trying to get in say hi paul try again i'm still alive and well can you hear him <laughs> yeah we can hear him so, hey, paul. yes uh, I so can... what you up to paul i'm watching freaking football that's yeah. all i ever do football and uh duck dynasty <laughs> Yeah, I, I can, know Duck Dynasty was still on. Oh shit, man! Go to YouTube and get anything. Oh, okay. I can uh, send him a link. I can yes. send him a link if send, he wants. Send him a call. link, Craig. He's going to send you a link, Paul. Okay. I didn't. Okay, I didn't have his mind. email. I asked him to send me his email. What? Uh, he says he doesn't have your email. I just sent it to him. He said he just sent it to you, Craig. All right. Okay, he's gonna he's gonna send you a, a, an invite. Stand Who by. Got, got on there? We got Andy Tannis. We got Billy Fender. We got Mitch Scooby, Kathy Godsey. Uh, we got Zach Lane and Chad Lane, and and uh, we also got Chad Reed on here. Oh God! Yeah, Not Chad. Reed. <laughs> Chad, the Chad Reed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll I'll, uh, I'll hang loose and look for whatever I have to do. Okay, because we're we're technophobes, so so hold uh, on for us. <laughs> All right. I'm, I, no, I need to get off, don't I? Yeah. Go. He's going to send you a link. Okay. Bye. Right, bye. Hey guys, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I need to get going, <clears throat> so I'm going to have to leave the meeting. But Paul will come on, and I'm sure that the meeting will this uh podcast will okay, be okay. Kathy, we we appreciate it. you. Appreciate you. Okay. It's so nice Kathy. to meet all of you. Nice meeting you, Kathy. And I'm looking forward to seeing it up later on, okay? Good to see you, Kathy, and thanks for the kind words. Okay, I appreciate it. it yeah, thank you for having me, guys. Thanks so much. Okay. Yeah. Bye. I see Chad's okay. not driving anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Chad made it into his house. <clears throat> You know, I wanted to throw something in there, just talking about different uh, different styles of music. And, I, and I, I saw something back in the 80s. I had a pretty cool conversation with Mick Ralphs from Bad Company. And uh, Mick was telling me, yeah, when I, when I was in high school and stuff, he said, you know, I knew he used to uh, do stuff with Gilmore. And then we, we shared the same place together. And we used to do a lot of guitar playing together. And I thought about it for a minute. I said, well, that's pretty cool, Mick. He goes, he said, yeah, he said, you know, we had different things going on. So we we're always trying new things. <clears throat> and later on, I started listening to like different things from, you know, we listened to the Gilmore play and Pink Floyd and then listening to Mick Ralph's from Bad Company. And occasionally you could pick up some things that each both of them were doing that nobody else was doing. 
And then to fast forward, um, my mom was a, a gym teacher in high school, and she used to tell me all the time how the kids, the kids love to play. You know, kids love the older music from the seventies and uh, music coming into the eighties and stuff. Uh, I said, really? I said, even with all this new stuff. She said, no, no. They like Leonard Skinner and uh, Leonard Skinner and Led Zeppelin, Marshall Tucker Band, the Outlaws, the Allman Brothers. And and I just sat there and thought about it. And I said, well, that's, that's kind of cool. And then, you know, so here we are in 2023. And it's really neat to see, you know, a new art, newer artists coming in and looking back at what's going on and picking up things from what was going on back then, then adding their own, you know, adding their own flavor to it, adding their own uh, flavor to it and, you know, bringing it up to their level and just turning it into something awesome. So I just wanted to share that because I think it's totally cool how you can go back into history and pick things up and then run with it. And then it comes back up and then you can look at what was going on back then. Hey, and then there's Paul. Your- Cool stuff. That's cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hey, there's Tanner. Love it. <laughs> Tanner, that uh, Tanner's Tanner in Craig's from college. Grandson. There's our college boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come coming home to get something to eat. <laughs> How many people we got on now, Craig? Well, we got we got eight on now. We that's what well, we had before eight. I know you said something about 12 or to me at one time. Well, we, so we, like, that's our maximum. Yeah. Oh, we have a real party. Paul Tanner, got can, Tanner, can you hear us? Yeah. Can you hear us, Tanner? We can't hear you for some reason. Paul's connected to the audio. There's Paul. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. we got you, Paul. I didn't have your email address. Well, uh, you know what? I, I I don't even check my damn email hardly anymore. <laughs> but Good I'm to here. have you on. Thank you. I mean, what what what's the the occasion? Are you did you get decorated today? <laughs> <laughs> Griff, Griff 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 got me this uh, pilot's outfit, and he's been wanting me to wear it. I said I'll wear it on the hundredth show i didn't think we would get this far but here we are (laughs) and and it's gonna keep on going too it looks like (laughs) that's that's where i live right there that brown spot that's my property (laughs) (laughs) i've been there before but it's been many years oh yeah and i'll tell you paul what's a little bit concerning is i do believe craig could walk in any airport right now and they oh, would no. say <laughs> gone through. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh man i had that picture in my head with why you were saying that man i'm good <laughs> yeah, i tell you what man it, it, it's a crazy ass world oh yeah <laughs> i think i'm going to the grocery store after we finish this yeah 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 he's gonna see <laughs> maybe Just that's a walmart <laughs> I, need, I need video of that I'm, that is funny. Well, shoot, yeah, man, it's good, good to hang out, man. I, I was sitting here indulging, and uh, I said, "Oh shit!" <laughs> so I had to get, I had to find you real quick so I could come on with y'all, man. I'm congratulations on a hundred shows, my God. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we didn't yeah. think we'd get this far. We I never thought. Mikey, yeah, Mikey on today. I, I haven't. Seen- no, we haven't. Uh, he called Craig not too long ago. But, he, and Craig, he called me, but he called from a different number, and I called him back, and I haven't heard back from him. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that's the way Mike got. He's still rocking. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm going to go through Nashville here this next week. I was going to try to get a hold of him and come Craig, come through there. Are you going? I to, got. I got to go through to Nashville to go down to uh, Macomb. To Macomb, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm going to make it this year, y'all. I, I, I had chemo. I got off the dang pump yesterday. Hell, I went out and walked around, you know, walked today. I feel pretty good and I hadn't had any problems with it, but, uh, that weekend I have it and I can't, I can't count on how I'm going to feel, you know? So I just don't know that I'm going to make it. Probably yeah, to the immunity thing, you know, you don't want to be around a whole lot of people either, you know, where you, you know what, 
I don't, don't bother you. Shit. I really don't, man. I mean, you know, well, well you're tough. Really, you're a tough yeah, guy, I'm, Paul. <laughs> well, listen here. Last week, Monday, a week ago, I'm visiting a friend, and I'm in, we're in we're in her backyard, and I hear my phone ringing in the car, and I said, ah, I am not even going to worry about it, and, and so. A few hours later, I decided to pick up my phone and look at it and see who had called. And I, my, I had a cousin that called and a friend of mine that called. And I called this friend of mine back, and, and he said, damn, I'm glad to talk to you. And I said, why? And he said, because well, everybody in Leland thinks you're dead. And I'm like, <laughs> 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 so so uh, I said, look, do this for me. We had a blues festival down in Leland the other day, and uh, – and I said, don't tell anybody if you, if you know. And because when I showed up at the Blues Fest, there was about a dozen people that thought they were seeing a ghost. <laughs> 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 it was pretty funny. I got a kick out of it. But well, I'm Paul, doing okay, y'all. Paul, look how cool it is, though. I mean, we've got the people Ooh. that we have on here, man. We've got you, a manager of Leonard Skinner. And then we got Mitch Scooby, the bus driver for Leonard Skinner. Then we got Billy Fender, who played with Alan Collins, you know, back in the day. Yeah. We got Chad uh, Reed, who used to beat up on Ronnie Van Zant all the <laughs> time. You know, it was kind of like his, his only man. son that he never had. And then we got Andy Tannis, who who knew hey, the Andy. original band and was an original roadie. And then we got the stone roadie, Craig Reed. This is like a, a whole, and then we've got the new protege over there, Zach Lane and, <laughs> and, uh, Chad. So yeah, this is like yeah. a really cool lineup. Yeah. Those guys are kicking ass too. I, I watch those videos and stuff. That's good stuff, man. Thank good you. Stuff. Yeah. No kidding. It's good good stuff. Paul. Good to see y'all. It really is. It's good to be seen. Hey, after last Monday, I thought I was dead too. <laughs> How far are you from Indianola? Uh, 20 miles. Is that right? Yep, about that. We're going to be talking to these people at the Blue Biscuit down there about doing some shows. Oh, really? Yeah. That, that lady's a friend of mine. We do a uh, – every year we do the, a blues competition. You're in Memphis, right? Yeah, yeah. You it it you know about that blues competition, I'm sure. Right. They we we they do it regionally, and so they do one in uh, in Indianola yeah. at the BB King Museum, mm -hmm. and then later on everybody goes to the to the biscuit, and and they do it. You know, it's a pretty cool deal. I have friends that play over there all the time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, good place. And the BB King Museum. If you ever go down there, let me know. I, I've got you an in. Yes, sounds good. You know, you know, Glenn Owen, you know him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, yeah. They came and saw me at um, Yazoo City. Yazoo okay. City. I mean, yeah, let me let me school you on that. In Mississippi, it's Yazoo City. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yazoo. <laughs> You're right. I'm sorry. Not I'm, Yazoo. I'm too uppity. <laughs> I'm too uppity. I said, I said Yazoo. <laughs> Yazoo. Right. Yazoo. I hear you. Yazoo City, right. They came yeah. and saw me there and... and we, we hit it off and we talked some and they said, you really should be playing at the blue biscuit. So I'm going to talk to yeah. them. Next week. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Cool little venue. They got good. You remind, food. Me, of that, you remind me of that saying, man, it says the, the rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Uh, yeah. I actually wrote that down the other day in, on, on Facebook. And they said, is it, have you reincarnated into Mark Twain? You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, You look good. You look good. Hey, I, I, I feel unbelievably good, y'all. I tell you what, I, uh, my, I, I've had three chemos in a row, and my first one, I mean, I thought it was going to kill me. And I got sick, and so the next day I went in and got a B12 shot. Then when I had my next chemo, it did not bother me at all the whole time. And then this time, uh, it, it has not bothered me a bit. So I feel good, and, you know, I don't know, man. Go well, you, you got a great attitude. Uh, that helps a lot, you know, from yeah, what I've you seen. Better, you better keep it. You better keep that because it's grim otherwise, brother. Yeah, go yeah. ahead and beat this thing and get it out of the way. Yeah, you know, I was telling somebody a little while ago, they, they sent pictures. They're down on the coast doing this um, classic car rodeo deal that goes on every year. 
And I wrote them back and I said, man, watching y'all, I, I, it just makes me remember how, how good I had it and how dull my damn life is now, you know? So I, I'm better, I'm about ready to get out and do something or go somewhere. Just a bump in the road, man. Just think of it that way. Oh yeah. Oh you don't, yeah. You don't look any different than you did the last time I saw you. You just look yeah. just as good. I feel fine, man. I might have a little bit less hair up there. <clears throat> I think you know, I've lost some, but but I still got a little bit. Hair's overrated. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it sure is. Ears. <laughs> Well, well, I tell you what, we appreciate you coming on, Paul. I mean, you you topped it off for us, man. You know, we, man, we how, long, how long have y'all been doing it today? Oh, I think a couple hours now, and oh, isn't it, Craig? Good. Well, yeah, yeah it's, I'm sorry, uh, man. Craig, I I didn't check my damn phone, and you know, I just spaced it out. That's the way I do. Well, it's actually working out pretty good. Uh, you know, we were flying by the seat of our pants and Craig was the pilot, you know, and we, uh, <laughs> we seem like we're pulling it off, you know, <laughs> everybody's here. It might not be, you know, uh, exactly perfect, but it's working. So it's great. You know, it's it great. got a little confusing with me dealing with all these windows and trying to trying to send, trying to send, uh, emails and, uh, yeah, it was uh, find them and send them. Yeah, it was weird. But yeah. it finally That's worked out. Okay. My, my last message, I said, call me. <laughs> said, call me well, on I, the phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what that's one way to get me. But hell, my phone, my ringer's off anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. <clears throat> yeah, the one that we're missing is that Estes and Pops. Pops, that would oh be great God. to have Pops. Pops, on. I said uh, he, I, I said he was coming on. I sent him a couple of things, but uh, he didn't. He didn't come in. Yeah, that Pops is a character, man. Shit fire, boy. I mean, <laughs> the, the the story about that 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 thing we were doing in Wyoming that time, and and, and him and Brian, that big friend of Gary's, got in a fight. <laughs> they got in a play fight that turned into a real fight. <laughs> shit everywhere i mean you know just worse than damn uh back at the hotel well that's so, one thing that uh you know is skinner and drinking and fighting those are the three things man that yeah. always go together <laughs> so i don't i don't understand it <laughs> like that story you told about who was it? it was Gary and, and Johnny that were fighting at the, at the hotel and the Resident sprinklers Resident came Resident. on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Look, I grabbed, I grabbed Johnny, uh, big Lou grabbed Gary. And as soon as we grabbed them to pull them apart, the sprinklers came on and all four of us went down. <laughs> I, it was, it was funnier than hell, man. It, I mean, a few minutes later, the cops showed up, you know, but, Every I, I talked them all down. So. Was that in the middle of the night, or was that during the day? Oh, when yeah. was it? We've been to a James Taylor concert, and they got ripped at the at the James Taylor concert. Later in life, I got to meet James Taylor over in Little Rock, and uh, I I told him I, I reminded him of the time we were at at uh, at um, Starwood Amphitheater in Nashville. And Gary and when Gary and them wanted to go see him, so I, we went out to the show. They got drunk, and Gary was trying to climb over the barricade, and get up on stage, and I'm, I'm telling you, it was nothing. <laughs> oh and after the show, he goes up to uh, James Taylor and taps him on the shoulder, and, and and he says something that was was probably incoherent because Gary was drunk, and and Craig can tell you how that gets. <laughs> but uh, but uh. James Taylor kind of shrugged his shoulders a little bit and Gary had walked on and I, I told him, I said, uh, a Skinner survivor. He said, Oh, so th that pretty much explained it all to him, I guess. <laughs> and I got, I got to tell him that later on in life when I met him over in little rock and he, uh, he said, oh, you know, I remember that. And that, and that was pretty cool. Fun times. Hmm. Yeah, I got to talk to James Taylor's brother, Livingston Taylor. That yeah. that guy is pretty cool too, you know. And yeah. he's real easy yeah. to talk to, and he'll talk to you all about. He's actually, 
he's a really good guitar player and singer, just like his brother. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's oh, very yeah. underrated. And writer he, too. Writer yeah, too. Yeah, you know, he uh he didn't really want to be a big famous guy, you know, or I think he yeah. would have been. So I Same think James Taylor was kind of reluctant too. He didn't really care to have all the spotlight, <clears throat> but he got it. But Gary loved him, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. Gary, guys, we'd ride on Gary's bus and, and he'd sit in the back of that bus sometimes. He'd play Mac McAnally songs. And he'd sit there and he'd he'd put his hands, his hat over his eyes like that. And because the songs were so poignant and some of them were sad, you know, he'd sit back there and cry uh, with his with his hat over his eyes, just like that. And you know, he'd he he was uh Gary had a soft soft spot. Sometimes I thought it was in his damn head though. Paul, do you remember the night that both the bus? I was we were on the Gary's bus, and uh, I was on Gary's bus, and with Dale, and 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 the both buses pulled over, and yeah, so they could fight. And, yeah, you see me nodding my head, don't you? You you ended up you ended up <laughs> over on on Gary's bus, and 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 me it ended up be, be me and Dale and. Uh, Carol Chase were the only ones on Gary's bus. Everybody yeah. else went over to to the other bus, and then and then uh, and then everybody took off. And then that's when you became the um, the tour manager. Tour manager, yeah. yeah. Do you remember that night? What was going on? I I don't remember. It could be <laughs> any number of things. I mean, you know. Well, get on the damn going on TV. that you that that they they felt like you could handle the situation and Gary come back and said, "Okay, Paul's going to be the the, the <laughs> yeah." Well, you know, I, I've always kind of had that knack. I mean, I I can I can start a fight or I can end <laughs> fight, you know. I never was I never was much much about talking somebody out of a fight, but He's a diplomat. <laughs> well, yeah, and I should have been a damn politician. I could have done a hell of a lot better than these knuckleheads are doing today, I tell you. <laughs> Don't those get guys me started. Are, are you saying those guys were still fighting when the band reformed? Hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. As, as bad one. as they were with the original band or, or different? No, 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 not nearly. Okay. I remember, Craig, remember the time in Berlin? No, 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 no. It wasn't Berlin. It was another town in Germany. And it was the night after Billy had gone down in the basement of that hotel and couldn't find his way out <laughs> and, and, and broke the fire alarm to get out. And he, cut, he cut his hand and he had blood. I, I mean, I walked back in the hotel right in the middle of the day. <laughs> I, I said night, but it was right. In the, it was all during the daytime, and I and uh, I had been out for a walk. Walk back in, and Billy's at the front desk bleeding. I mean, he's got blood all over him. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> and the guy, and the guy at the front desk, he told told me what had happened because Billy was incoherent. He couldn't say a word hardly. <laughs> and uh, he. Uh, that he had literally had gone down there and broke the fire alarm so because he couldn't find his way out of the, the parking garage underneath the hotel. <laughs> That's like that black guy in, in uh, Congress the other day, huh? He did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's He's first thing Billy Powell. <laughs> oh, my God. I remember, I remember the 75 tour. Yeah. I was uh, We stayed in one of those um, – I think it was a Holiday Inn or a Marriott that had that courtyard, like an L-shaped yeah. thing, you know, and you could see the other rooms across the courtyard, you know. Yeah. I was rooming, I was rooming with Joe Barnes, and I got up and I went and looked in the mirror, looked in the window, and I could see Ronnie and Billy. Ronnie was sitting on the bed, and Billy was pacing in front of him. And he was on a tirade about something because his hands were flying, you know. Yeah. 
And he, he was pissed off about something. I'm not really sure what it was. And Ronnie's just sitting there with his head kind of down, listening to him. Wow. And all of a sudden, Ronnie got up and popped him in the mouth. <laughs> <That's really laughs> I, saw Billy, I saw Billy double over, you know, and um, and then Billy's running around and he, he's looking. There's blood coming out. And he's he's looking at his mouth, you know. And I'm watching. I said, I said, Joe, I said, you're not going to believe what I just saw. He said, what? I said, I just saw Ronnie just pop the shit out of, out of Billy. You know, I said, it looks like he lost his teeth or something. I said, he's, he's looking on the floor for something, you know. He said, <laughs> he said oh, that happens all the time. Said, yeah, Joe wasn't even phased, I'm sure, man. I think it was. I saw Billy the next day and he's missing two, he's missing like the tooth or two. And, you know, and it's just like this like standard operating procedure for me. I mean, yeah. for them, I mean, I'm, I'm freaking out. <laughs> I said, Were I you on? Craig or or Andy, were you either one of y'all at the show that uh, Skinner did with Chicago and Tampa? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Craig, yeah. Craig was there. I know you were there, Craig. Did you go with us after that show to the bar when we <laughs> ended up in the gay bar? <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie and Ruth. Ronnie brought this thing back to the hotel. Uh Oh yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I didn't go, but I remember the hotel incident. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he, <laughs> uh, he got in the room with this thing and ended up. He, I don't know what all he broke over this thing's head, but but he ended up throwing it over the for the second floor railing onto the parking lot. Yeah, mm. it was wild. Well, I I remember they gave him money, and yeah. that. That was the reason that Ronnie got out of that because the guy accepted money yeah. because he was all beat yeah. up and and, right. and we gave him money to go get fixed up and and when it went, yeah because he accepted yeah. money he couldn't sue Ronnie. And I heard it was a hotel lamp and a hotel ashtray. Uh, I I don't know, man. I tell you what, I but but Ed King's book, if it ever comes out. It's it's it's, that in there. it's getting closer. It's getting closer. Uh, that, yeah, I hadn't talked to Sharon in some time, but yeah, it's uh, it it needs to be out there. I've I've read a ask, little. Bit she asked me to she asked me to submit a couple of things the other day, and I did. Yeah. So it's getting closer. Yeah. Cool. But yeah, Ronnie's hands. You remember Ronnie's hands? He must oh, have yeah. had that thing down, and was swinging. And missed it a couple of times and must have hit the yeah. hit some fender furniture because that's when his hands were all banned. All cut up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he really. Yeah, that, was a, that was a crazy night, man. That's what that same night. Um, I forget what I was driving. At. I think I was driving a damn Volkswagen or something. But um, Bob Burns wanted to drive my car, and I. My ignorant ass <laughs> man. <laughs> We're driving down Dale Mabry in Tampa at you know in the middle of rush hour and he's wanting to drive and I'm like, oh my God. I let him. He did all right though. We we got out of there alive with no dents. <laughs> Funny stuff, man. <laughs> Then Paul, you're you need to write another book, man. You 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 got a ton of stuff, man. I, well, the thing about it is, is if I'd have really done it right, I I would have talked to Craig a lot more, talked to Mikey who was out there a lot more. I talked to uh, more of the roadies like Pops, and I mean, because but the main thing is, is when when I wrote that. I didn't write about anything that I didn't witness personally. And that, that was the whole reason for me doing it. Oh, thank you, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I still, I don't have any of those right now. If anybody wants one, they're just going to have to hit me up on Facebook, but I don't have them. Yet, but Amazon does. I think. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a great book. You guys, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, what's the best way to get it? Uh, can they, can they get it off well, of Amazon? Uh, yeah. Yeah, they can get it on Amazon or whichever, all them, all them book things. I usually have some. I don't have any right now. But, I mean, if if I got enough people hitting me up on face, Facebook and telling me they want one, then I, I'll order some. Yeah, I got mine it'll signed. It'll take about, take about three weeks. I got mine signed. 
Awesome. Yeah. Hey, Mitch. That Mitch. That's Mitch. Yeah. Hey, Paul, how's it going, man? It's going great, man. It's good to see you. <laughs> yes, sir. It's, it's been a few years, hasn't it? Yes, it has. My goodness. My goodness, what the years have done. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. That's an understatement. Like what we can do about it. Yeah. Right. We, we had to get a reunion on the Zoom meeting on the Stone <laughs> Roadie show to get everybody back together. We'll have to do this again, you know? Yeah. Well, anytime y'all, I, you know, I, I don't do much anymore. Walk my dog. Oh, oh, wait a minute. There he is back there. Hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy. You want to go for a walk? Oh, that, he, he, what? He don't want to be what? fooled, though. No, well, he sure don't, man. He's a pretty smart, <laughs> though. Hey, buddy. This but is a qu real quick question. Is uh, so I don't think this one's been asked or answered. Um, so, Mitch, was you was you driving was you driving a bus at, during the time that Paul was managing? Was that during the same time? Yeah, yeah, it was the same era. <laughs> yeah. I was with him for ten years. Right, 80, 87 to ninety-seven. And Mitch, you were when when were you out there? Yeah, I, I was out there. It had to be, yeah, it had to be between like 95, 95 and ninety eight. Because I was with Hank Junior. Yeah. I was out there on trucks and buses. And then uh, when I jumped on buses full time, I was on the. Uh, uh, you were out there. We were on the uh, uh, back to the swamp tour. Uh huh. You know. So that uh, had to be <clears throat> you know, uh, you you ever know a guy named Frank Michaels? Frank Mitch Michaels. I'm just sitting there thinking, Frank, is that is his, is his daddy Larry? Yeah, I think so. But he was a uh, he he did some stuff with Hank one time. I think he drove for him at some point, but I I don't remember. I mean, he lives here in this town that I live in, and uh, you know, I, let me tell y'all about this town since we ain't got enough of time anyway. <laughs> Cleveland Cleveland has a Grammy museum. Did you know that, Andy? Yeah, you tell. We we talked about uh, me coming down. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, and it's a cool deal. They've got a, a Southern rock display, but, you know, it, it it leaves a lot to be desired. But anyway, um, got a Grammy <laughs> Museum and then, um, um, God, dog, it, what's his name that played that bass, bass for Elvis? Oh, Drew Schiff. No, Drew Schiff. no, no, another one. Todd Bill? Now the one he also produced Dan Fogelberg records. Give small. Um, never mind. I can't think of his name, so I I don't want to. This to be a guessing contest, and I I don't even know what I was talking about. Oh, they've got DMI <laughs> over there, Delta Delta Music Institute over there, and yeah. that and that's what I was going to tell you about. It's a pretty cool deal. It, um, Jerry Chef played bass for Elvis on the Road with Ronnie yeah. on drums. Tommy Codbill played on all those records, like in the ghetto. Yeah, uh, um, I think Jerry Jerry Chef may have played some on some of them. I think. Uh, I, I, you know, I always, I always space this guy's name out, and I should know it as well as mine. I mean, he, Norbert Putnam, for goodness. Oh sake. yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah, yeah he played yeah. Yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, but uh, he put that whole thing together up at Delta State. That was his his brainchild, and that thing is, I mean, it's rocking, man. They're they're putting kids out, and they're, I mean, playing in Carnegie Hall and all kind of stuff from right here in this little, right down the street from where I live. A friend of mine teaches bass at Delta State, Barry Bays. Oh, Barry, Barry Bays, yeah, he lives he lives that way from me about a block and a half. He's a good guy. I like Barry. Oh, good. yeah. Hey yeah. Andy, did have you ever had anything to do with Keith Horn? No, sorry. Yeah, he's a Memphis guy, wasn't he? Uh, well, he actually no, he's no, from no, 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 no. I'm keeping Virginia. I'm keeping, I'm thinking of Keith, Keith Sykes. Yeah, he played with Frampton and Waylon Jennings and a bunch of people, and and I just uh, went up there and did that interview with Joey Davis and and uh, filmed uh, those guys playing, and Keith Horn was there on bass. Phenomenal bass player. Um, mm -hmm. Played with a lot of greats. Look at this. He's still looking at me like, get your <laughs> fat ass up and take me for a walk. 
<laughs> he's not going to forget, man. He's, he's not going to forget. You knew Bill right, Marshall. He's been on one today. He'll go out on another one. Mitch, you knew Bill Marshall, right? <clears throat> Are you talking to me? Mitch. Oh. Mitch. Yeah. Yeah. Bill, yeah. I remember Bill Marshall. Yeah he's, a boy. yeah, he's a Memphis boy. He played with Target and a whole bunch of bands in Memphis. Yeah, he's a he's a legend here. Yeah, no, I haven't I haven't seen Bill in a while. He's a good dude. Still still playing his ass off, man. Yeah, still playing great. He's, he's in one of the most popular bands in Memphis called Almost Famous. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've heard about them. Mm -hmm. They're a really really good band. I mean, they're they're great great guys too. Or maybe I almost heard about them. I don't know. <laughs> almost heard, almost heard of sort of almost famous. I hear you. Hey, Paul, did you see when we had Kurt Custer on? Yeah, you know what? And and we had talked about that. I hadn't talked to Cuss in a long time. Um, love Cuss to death. We had a we had a a missed a, a disagreement on politics. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's he's that's easy to do. He's West Coast and I'm Deep South, you know. So what, whatever that tells you, uh, that's all I'll say about it. I love Cuss to death, but I hadn't talked to him in a long time. Yeah, I'd like to get back in touch with him, and eventually I will. Yeah, he was great. He was great on the podcast with a lot of great oh, information and stories and things. We we enjoyed him. Did they talk about the Cuss and Bill show? No. Brandon? Craig, you remember the Cuss and Bill show? Oh my God! Yeah, I was, that's what I was talking about when all everybody on the on the bus. Oh my God, you guys yeah. were crazy. <laughs> you and Billy and Custer. It, that, was, so, that, it was so funny though. Man. Was, Some of the stuff that, that was they would hilarious. Do. Yeah, they got in a hotel room and they they used to film that. They used to they used yeah, to yeah. Billy, Billy used had to little... film it. they used to come up with skits and they would yeah. film them <laughs> and then they yeah. would yeah. funny i mean just funny oh. shit. and billy and billy's friend uh um jimmy jimmy gillum oh my god yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, the what was the menu billy yeah, come up with kick uh <laughs> uh jimmy's kick your ass cafe <laughs> he had all kinds of stuff. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't remember what, what all he had on that. But he had back eyed, back eyed, back. I still got it. I think I've still got it on my laptop. If I can never get it to work again, <laughs> I mean, that, it's, it, that it's was handwritten. Hilarious. I mean, he wrote that thing handwritten. This whole menu. I mean, it was. Had all kinds of stuff on there. Oh, that was hilarious! Yeah, roadkill, roadkill cafe. <laughs> I think that's what it was. Craig, looks yeah. like we lost Billy Fender, and uh, <clears throat> we probably ought to wrap this up because uh, we still got the uh, tail end of it to to put yeah, on. There. We're, uh, be a, it'll be a yeah, it'll be a Joe Crimp session. Man, it was good talking to y'all. I'm I'm glad I got on. I'm sorry it was so late. Oh man, you were the cherry. You were the cherry on the cake. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Griff. Uh, so, the, do you get? Do you have any updates for uh, maybe how Mark Howard's doing? Or, uh, yeah, I talked to uh, Dwayne Easley, and uh, he's been in chats with him, and he's actually, I uh, think, he's going to make it to the uh, to the uh, monument. Um, they're talking about trying to get him in an RV, and uh, that way he don't have to leave. So. He's, he's trying his hardest to come. He's, he's doing a lot better. And, uh, I'm going to give him a phone call here pretty soon, uh, next couple of days too, to see, see what he's up to. But he, he's been posting things on Facebook and he seems like he's feeling really good. And, and, uh, you know, he was struggling trying to uh, save that leg and it was jeopardizing his health. And finally, you know, he just, decided that it just wasn't worth it anymore kind of like you know gene with his eye you know gene was trying to keep his eye there and uh, after the crash and and they and they kept telling him you know oh you know you just have to wait and he said no nah. he said take it out i don't want any more to do with it and you know i guess there comes a certain point in time when you just can't deal with it anymore and you do what you got to do you know so yeah god bless him man you know it's 
<laughs> got to be the hardest. All you, all you Skinnered guys are, are a bunch of tough some bitches. <laughs> all sure. y'all are. You yeah. know. Hey, do you ever get the nine one one tape from Automotive or West Virginia? Yeah, I'm. Hey, I got that nine one one thing, you know, and I let the cat out cat out of the bag because Craig was asking, you know, I said, Craig, I got the nine one one tape of Auto, and he goes, No, nah, you better not play that of Auto. And I go, Well, look, I said it's kind of a spoof, you know. We yeah. we we kind of worked on it, and Auto was in on it, so I was going to release it, and I was going to look at Craig's. uh reaction to it but you know you can't fool craig he's you know he, he <laughs> so, so i'm gonna put it on that i'm gonna put it on the tail end of this you know, i'm glad you brought up auto man he sent me um auto sent me some lyrics of this song that he wrote called shantytown yeah yeah I was I, people send me lyrics all the time. They just want me. They want me to, to look them over and give them the, my approval or critique it or whatever. And, and I hate to say it, but most of them are pretty bad. Right. Obvious that these people cannot write lyrics, you know. But what he sent me was really good. Cool. I mean, exceptionally good. So I made some changes to some of the lyrics, and I put music to it. And all I have to do is record it. And then I'm going to send it to him either by video or whatever. But be on the lookout for that because it's a really good song. I catch myself singing it while I'm driving sometimes. Wow, what a what a great uh, thing that you did there, man. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, but it was he gave me a lot to work with. I mean, so um, you know, um, but they they were. I mean, they were exceptional lyrics, and I wasn't expecting something that good. You know. Um, I don't, and the changes I made were slight. I mean, I didn't really do a whole lot of stuff to it, you know. But uh, what's the anniversary of the crash date? The 22nd? 20th. 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 So that's a Friday, right? Yeah. Well, that kind of works out because I'm playing in Water Valley on the 21st. I thought it was I thought it was a Saturday. That's the 21st. 21st. Yeah, it's a, it's a okay. Friday. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Right. <clears throat> All right, Craig, let's wrap it up, man. We'll be on here all day, but I could I could chat with <laughs> yeah, you this guys is, forever. Yeah, this is going to be over three hours. All righty. <laughs> all right, this is Bun Podcast uh, 100 of the Stone Roadie Show. And uh, get ready to uh, for uh, Griff Martin on the road. Uh, on the road with Griff Martin. And, uh, yeah, see you next time on the Stone Roadie Show. Until the next time, uh, happy trails to you until we meet again. And thanks for having me. I appreciate y'all, okay? We, we appreciate you guys coming. It's good, good to meet you guys that we haven't met yet. Yep. Bye. Good to see everybody. Later. Y'all take care. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping you can help me out. I'm I'm lost, man. I, I don't know where I'm at. Uh, okay, sir. Can you kind of explain uh, some kind of a landmark or some kind of maybe a tower or something like that? What city are you in, anyway? Man, I, I don't even know. I was on GPS. I'm, I'm trying to get somewhere. It took me down some road, and the next thing you know, I, I can't see anything. It's I mean, I'm talking it's dark. I see trees. Well, let me ask you this. Are you feeling okay? Do you need some kind of a medical assistance? No, no, I just need help out of here. Can can you find my location and get me out of here? Or just say, I, if you can find where I'm at, I, I can probably drive out of here. Are you guys able to help me? I, I really don't know where I'm at. Well, we're up here in the mountains, and, and we can't hardly get anything like that in there unless we know where you're at. Now, we now we know a little bit about cell phones, but that's a little bit out of our, out of our range. Oh, 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 there's a dog. That's the only thing I. It's a. There's a hound dog out here, man. Can, man, can you help me out? I, I don't know where I'm at. It's dark out. There's leaves on either side of my car. I can't see out the window, but I can see a dog. It's a coon oh, dog. Okay, or a calm, hound dog calm or down there. Calm down, sir. Uh, everything. Take three deep breaths and, and just calm down. Now, what kind of dog is it? It's a bloodhound, and then. Man, where I'm from, I mean, I don't know, but I don't want to see a bloodhound in the middle of the woods because where's a bloodhound? There's a 
There's a man, and where there's a man, there's a gun, and there's a bloodhound, a man, and a gun, and can you get me out of here? What, what does the dog look vicious? That dog is scaring the crap out of me. Did, did, did you hear the dog bark at you or growl at you? Hold on, let me... Oh my God. I hear banjos. There are banjos. Please, you've got to be able to ping me. I... I was on Jasper Road. That's the last road I remember. I was on Jasper Road. Okay, sir. What, what's your name? Give us your name. My name's Otto. Okay. Uh, what year were you born? What difference does that make what year I was born? Well, we need to get a little file on you before we come out there. This could just be some kind of uh, illegal immigrant or something. Do oh, I sound like an illegal... The dog. There's a dog in banjos. Oh, God. No! What town are you coming from? Um, man, I don't even know. I was in, uh, I'm not from around here. I'm, I'm not from around here at all. Did you say you heard some banjos playing? Yes, I heard banjos playing. There's a dog and probably a man with a gun. Can you please get me out of here? Are the banjos getting louder? What is that squealing noise? Well, I, I think we pulled you up on our license data, and what I'm seeing here is you got a real pretty mouth. And I've been selling my soul, working all day, overtime hours, for bullshit pay, so I can get out here, waste my life away, drag back. Looky here, looky here, Griff Martin on the road, and I'm in, I believe, Hopewell, City Point, Virginia, at the Omega Bar. And I was invited by uh, Joey Davis, and uh, he is Oliver Anthony's guitar player. You know, the, uh, the famous song, Richmond, North of Richmond. So I'm here to uh, do an interview 
with uh, Joey Davis and uh, we're gonna find out a little history about Joey and how he got into playing guitar and also uh, how he got to get hooked up with uh, with Oliver Anthony and uh, so hope you guys enjoy it it's gonna be a great time okay inside the Omega bar here and this is what it looks like it's a, kind of a quaint little bar and a quaint little town nice clean little bar in here I'm not sure where uh, they set up to play probably in here and so I'm just waiting on uh, Joey Davis to come and we're gonna sit down and have a little chat with him so here we are at the Omega bar of course I just walked in and Look what's playing. Never fails. Every time I walk into a place, always a Skinner song. Nice quaint little bar here. <laughs> all right I just uh, met with Joey here and he brought all of his gear in and he's setting it all up and I'm trying not to bother him while he's getting geared up uh, he says he travels light and, uh, I look at his pedal board over there he's got some pretty cool pedals and it's going to be an awesome uh, night of entertainment with Joey Davis on guitar, Keith Horn on bass. Keith Horn, he's a guy, he's played with Peter Frampton, Waylon Jennings, Tanya Tucker, just to mention a few. So uh, we're going to sit down and have a little chat with him here in a little bit. And we're going to listen to some Joey Davis music. Okay, here we are with Joey Davis. We're at the Omega Bar and Grill. And Joey Davis uh, so graciously invited me up here. And we're in, uh, where, where are we, Joey? Hopewell, Virginia. Hopewell, Virginia. Now, uh, those of you that aren't familiar with Joey, certainly you will be soon. Uh, he, he plays with Oliver Anthony. He's his guitarist. And, of course, we all know who Oliver Anthony is. And... Uh, what we want to do is we want to get a little history here on Joey, uh, find out a little bit about where he was brought up, how he got into music and stuff, and how he hooked up uh, with uh, Oliver Anthony, which is actually Christopher Lunsford, right? Yeah, that's right. So uh, let's let's uh, go back a little bit, and and I know he's kind of short on time because he's got a gig here, and he invited me up, and I and I'm going to film some of it, but uh, appreciate you. Uh, coming Joey oh, uh, here and inviting me down and and getting to be a part of this let's let's go back to uh, where, where were you raised not too far maybe 30 minutes from here and yeah a place called Matoka Virginia Matoka yeah and we talked a little bit briefly about uh, when you got started uh, you said you were like 10 years old when you first picked up a guitar yeah I was started around 10 and went to lessons for three or four years and it nothing really clicked for me for a while and then Around middle school, I started to really get into it, and then high school, there was a lot of kids better than me, and I didn't like that, so I just kept working <laughs> at it and working at it, and it's kind of just been my thing ever since, you know. What do you think spurred it off, your your love for music? you have a musical family or anything like I that? I do have a musical family. My yeah? grandpa and my uncles, they all play music. What are they, were they guitar players, string players? Singer, guitar player and singers, yeah. Yeah, and they're from this area as well? Yeah, right? we all kind of... We've been the family's been in this area a while. And what kind of music was it that you guys were listening to back uh, then? Uh, back then it was all country, bluegrass, classic country type stuff, and I kind of branched off after that on my own. You know, I had like a rock phase and whatever. Right. Um, I like everything now. I play whatever I can get paid to play. Yeah, and so you're 29 years old now. We we talked about that. So. Uh, when you were growing up, say 10 years old, when was it that you like? probably first played with a, a couple guys guitar and stuff like that was, like did you have a band you did you have um, a band start a band my uncle had a band and i started gigging around 14 i would 
is when I really started to play with the group and try to go to all the gigs, you know. Okay, so 14, were you playing in front of people and things? Oh, it was just gigs just like this. So oh, I was, really? I mean, yeah. So you were pretty uh, comfortable with your playing then at 14 years old. You were... Um, I was okay. Just graciously, my parents or my uncle and his friends let me in the band. Was it more like just striking some chords and things? Yeah, it was it wasn't much rhythm links. guitar that they kept turned down pretty low. Yeah. So if you guys haven't seen uh, Joey, man, he really he, he he really ripped some some licks off on that on on the electric and the acoustic. Uh, so when you let's say what what was your first guitar? What was it? What kind of guitar was it? A Fender Strat. Fender Strat. Yeah. Oh, so you went right to the electric. Yeah, I had a Mexican Strat. Someone bought me when I was, I was playing loners for my first year or so, and then probably for Christmas, like around ten or eleven, someone bought me the Strat. I and then, got it. and so you, what did you have? Like an acoustic in the bedroom whenever you didn't want to make a bunch of noise. You just yeah. My grandpa had a Washburn. I would play. Oh, Washburn. Yeah. And then after that, I played the Strat for a long time, just a little amp or whatever. And so, like, uh, what, what was somebody? Let's let's talk about who who was somebody that you really lo you looked up to as a musician. I really like the guy from the Chili Peppers, John Frusciante. Oh wow! I love Eric Gales. He's a blues guy. Yeah, He's really, really. Oh good. yeah, I, I know some people that know him. Yeah. Yeah, I'm waiting for him to reach out on Instagram from, or something. Yeah, <laughs> from from Muscle Shoals area over there. Yeah, that guy. I saw him actually right over there at the Beacon not too long ago. Oh He's yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah, and okay, so. Um, you were like 14 years old and you were you were going around gigging and when was it that you got your first band or you were you know you call you called yourself something so late in i was playing with the band copperhead my uncle was the front man and late into that 15 maybe 15 i might have been 16 i know i didn't have my license yet my uncle kind of got some issues with the with his girlfriend and decided he couldn't be in the band anymore oh yeah and um so we were gonna hang it up and i'm like you know maybe i could sing too we'll just see and so we just started gigging singing and i'm still i still play some gigs through two or three gigs a year with copperhead oh with cool. the same guys yeah so anything like that you did any anything that's memorable to you some gig that you played that was like really cool or maybe there was somebody there that that uh you were impressed with like it could be even somebody famous. Anything like that ever happened? I did. Um, I was in a band kind of like the Chili Peppers called Strongbow for a while with my cousin. And we got, I wouldn't say big, but we opened for Seether. We opened for Panic at the Disco. We had a couple decent gigs. So that was cool to do. So a period of time from, say, 14 until now, That's. I mean, it's for me, it's a short amount of time because I'm an old guy, but for you, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it went by slow. And now let's let's go to where we are now. Um, and and you hooked up uh, with with Chris. And let's let's talk about how you met Chris. How did you meet Chris? Um, I went over right down the street from here to an open mic and played. And I saw Chris play, and he kind of just came up and introduced himself after, and he was saying he wanted to do some gigs. I'm like, well, dude, you sing, just book them, like. Okay. Don't worry okay. about the rest of it. And then before he had any really booked anything for us, everything online blew up. So you didn't you didn't even know of him or anything? No, I had never heard of him until that open mic. And then our first gig was Morris Farm, and there was like twelve thousand people there or something. The number changes. It's something like nine to twelve thousand people. Were there in, like say in this town? Were there like a lot of people that were familiar with him, uh, his music and his writings? I don't and things? think so. No, I don't, he wasn't gigging like. He wasn't playing around bars and stuff, so there wasn't a lot of people that knew. I think his, the internet kind of got him going. Did, would you say that after the open mic, things kind of blew up, or did they blow up before then, or was it, was it after that? It was after the open mic, because we, yeah. we had sat in my little music room on beanbag chairs, kind of working out covers and stuff, because we thought we were going to be doing, you know, long bar gigs, and then... Next thing I know, we've got all these big gigs booked, so we didn't really need those covers. So after you guys uh, hooked up, then you uh, where did where did you like going over to his place and you guys were sitting down and 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 playing jamming with him and stuff like that? Yeah, we did we did two rehearsals at my house where we just basically just sat and worked on covers, and then he had the Morris Farm gig come up and I agreed to go do it, and. I hadn't. I just listened to his music over and over on the way up there. I hadn't even heard any. Some of it. I've never even heard him play. And so Morris Farm was like, all we did was run over it right before we went on stage. That was my first time playing a lot of that stuff. 
So you really didn't even get to hear too much of his music when you met him. You were just like, wow. I mean, I'm sure that when you heard some of his songs, you were thinking, wow, these are some pretty cool songs, right? Yeah, I thought it was good. And I was like, man, he can really sing. He's like, and he was saying, you know, he hadn't really bought any kind of sound equipment or anything, but he was thinking about gigging and he had like some traction starting to go on the internet. And I'm like, you know, I got speakers. Let's just book the gigs and figure out what happens what happens after that and he sure did a good job booking them I'll say and when you were at the op open mic what was the audience reaction at that time was it a lot of people there or yeah it it's that place is usually pretty much full whenever you do open mics there when when he sang the the song Richmond North of Richmond was that like an explosion when people heard that just like it is now um, that song wasn't even written it wasn't when we were when we did that open mic oh wow really so he just wrote that song, and you were with him basically as his guitar player when he wrote it. Yeah, but I had nothing to do with him writing that song. Right. He was, that was all credit to him. I was sitting at home probably getting high when he wrote that song. When you when you got with him and, and you first heard him sing the uh, the lyrics to it, what did you think about that? I thought it was a good song. I mean, a kick-ass song. It just took kind of the world by storm. I mean, it was viral before I even heard it. What do you think came about in his mind as, as far as being able to come up with those lyrics hanging around him? Is he like, uh, is he is he uh, is he pretty much? I know he's he's not l really politically to to one uh, political view, uh, but uh, does he ever talk to you about any of that? No, we. I wouldn't want to speak for him for sure on anything right. like that. But we, that's not any topic of our conversation. Like, yeah. To me, I can speak for me, and I think it's all basically made up. So it doesn't like I have no big strong opinion on any of it. But yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to speak for him. We don't. Okay. It's not something we talk about at all. Well, let's move in a different direction and talk a little bit more about your abilities uh, as a, a guitar player with him. It had to be pretty difficult. I mean, well, of course you're a, a very accomplished guitar player, but in such a short time to come up with these riffs and these things. Uh, and then memorize them and then go on the road was it was it pretty hard to, to come up with these did you help him with a lot of the uh, uh, the actual uh, music as far as writing the chords and things like that or no did he do all, all of the writing a hundred percent of it is him all I did was show up to the gig and put some put some uh, some licks in there licks and solos in there yeah they um and for the first couple gigs honestly I was following him because I barely knew the songs I had just listened to him a bunch on Spotify and we are doing them, a few of them in different keys than what they were on Spotify. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I just kind of was along for the ride. I had nothing to do with the chords or any of that. But one thing I've noticed, uh, you know, is that when you play, there's there's a lot to it. And so memorizing all that, do you find it difficult or is it just no, it come I, to you pretty fast? I did about, I lived in Nashville a little bit over a year. And um, a lot of my money I made by picking up last minute gigs and learning their 50 or 60 song set list. And, you know what I mean? So it's easy for me to learn stuff and keep it in my brain, right. musically at least. <clears throat> okay, well I know you're, you're uh, wanting to go in there and, and, and get set up for your gig, so I'm just going to ask you a couple more things here. Um, as far as where you're going, where do you think uh, things are going to go? Uh, what, what are you guys uh, looking at as far as the future uh, together? Um, I mean, I think we're going to at least do a handful more gigs with the two of us and then maybe add a couple guys. We're not mm -hmm. set in stone on what we're going to do with that. But we're looking at touring next year. Not too busy, but busy enough to keep everything going. Okay, and so um, whenever you guys travel, is it kind of like a mob now? I know, I know you said you were shaking a bunch of hands and you actually came down with a cold actually. Yeah, that was after the... um, we did a gig and there was like, I don't know, nine or 10,000 people there and it felt like every one of them lined up to meet us afterwards and we met everybody till the line was empty. Yeah, and it's slowly growing, well, fast, growing kind of fast actually. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, well, one more question. Uh, tonight, what are we going to be listening to as far as what you're playing? Oh, I'll, it's no telling. I'll take a lot of requests. Me and these guys, we have like a 1,500-song repertoire, so we'll we'll do a little bit of everything. You'll hear some Michael Jackson, some Toto, I don't know, some Prince, Zach Brown. It could be anything. Oh, cool. Is it going to bother you if I kind of get up close and personal no, with the camera? Whatever you want to do, man. Cool. All right, Joey, Joey Davis, man, what a great guy, uh, you know, invited me up here and we got a little interview with him. He's going to let us put it on the uh, Stone Roadie podcast and say say hi to all the Stone Roadie fans. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Thank you, Joey Davis. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. 
Okay, here we have Helen Hunter. Not Helen Hunt, the movie star, but just as beautiful, right? <laughs> I was talking to her and her husband in there earlier, and she's a big fan. A big, big, huge, huge fan of Joey Davis, right? So what is it that you like about Joey so much? He's amazing. Joey's yeah? the best. Joey plays whatever the audience wants to hear, and he sounds amazing. How long have you known him? Two years. Two years? Two years. And where did you first see him at? Here. Here? The sheriff for Hopewell, we came for his um, party, and he won, uh -huh. and Joy was playing. And since then, we have gone to see him everywhere. We love him. Have you seen Oliver Anthony anywhere here around here at all? No. No? no. Just, just Joy. What did you think about when you found out that he was playing with that guy? And he's so I loved cool. it, but I felt sad because I was like, oh, I'm going to lose Joey. I'm not sad. Oh, yeah, but didn't he play at your daughter's? What was it? Yeah. Baby shower. Yes, if we did, we had him play in our backyard for her baby shower. We're up till 5 a.m. He is amazing. How long ago was that? Um, she just turned 12 months, 13 months. So it's been, um, yeah, it's been a little over a year. A little over a year? And he played in our backyard, and I already had him a retainer for another show. Oh, already well, gave see, him money for another show. He's going to be kind of like the Keith Richards of the Oliver Anthony band, uh, right? I hope so. Well, and so now you can say, yeah, uh, Keith Richards. Yep. Joey Davis yes, Joey played at, at the baby shower, right? Absolutely, yeah. and then, his wife, so yeah. she, she sits with us, and we sit with her, she's wonderful. Oh, cool. We love him. You haven't heard his best song yet. Yeah, what is that song oh, now? White House Road by Tyler Childers. White House Road? Yes, okay. don't need to hear that. Well, Helen Hunter, we really appreciate you coming on the Stone Roadie podcast and talking about you know, Joey favorite. Davis. And He's you're such favorite. a sweet lady. He's and, the best. And your husband is a great guy. And, I'm glad you're here. You're going to love yeah. him. Don't leave till you hear my song. Thank you so much. No, thank you. All right. Thank you. You're going to love Bye-bye. <laughs> Early in the morning when the sun does rise. Bloodshot eyes Playing and leaning when the sun stays slow That's about the time my first goes I got women up down this creek Yeah.
shallow grave Same old blues, just a different day Get me drinking that more time Get me higher than the grocery bill Take your trouble to the high farm Don't want me to get your bill We've been sniffing that cocaine Make a little bit of a little bit of a Don't want somebody to be couple interesting guys right here and, and myself you know I've never interviewed anybody that's been on American Idol that's that's kind of cool I used to watch American Idol back in the day but I haven't seen it in a while you now tell me your name my name's Kenny Miles I'm from Colonial Heights Virginia okay and your name my name's Nuke Bushner Nuke Parsons, Kansas. Bushner from Kansas yeah. we're at yes, Kansas Parsons Kansas Parsons Kansas yeah. it might get loud here in a minute uh, so, what are you doing here, Newt Bushner? Um, actually, I'm in Virginia right now doing a few shows with my man here. Yeah. And uh, we, we figured we'd stop in because we heard a couple guys were playing tonight. Right. Uh, we wanted to hear some live music, so we stepped in, and as soon as we got here, they're like, well, does anybody want to get on stage and play a song? So, yeah. we figured we'd take uh, advantage of that opportunity. Here we are with you now, man. Now, you're Newt's manager, right? Yes, sir. Yeah? So, were you around with him when he did the American Idol thing? No, I was not. I met Newt about three years ago. Yeah? And we probably did 75 shows together over the year. Cool. Over a few years. Your uh, American Idol experience. Who were the judges? Uh, the judges were Keith Urban, uh, Jennifer Lopez, and Harry Connick Jr. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. How did you do? Um, I advanced to Hollywood and then uh, later on dropped out. You know, later in 
the season, but all in all, it was a it was a great opportunity, man, and fun experience with that. So. You got a great sound. You really do sound good. Uh, Thank you, man. So, how many weeks were you involved with American Idol? Just uh, it was actually about a couple months, really. I mean, yeah, it's a pretty uh, ongoing deal there. So, so well, what? episode would it be if we went to look for it somewhere on like say YouTube or something? It was, it was season 2015. 2015? All, all you have to do is just Luke Bushner, American Idol, okay, and it will pop up. Well, what kind of songs did you sing like when you were on American Idol? So I actually sang uh, I Want to Keep Durbin song, uh, Tonight I Want to Cry. That was a good choice being how he's a judge, right? Yeah. Did yeah, you people, pick did you pick that song out? I did. I did. People thought I was crazy for doing it, but uh, Is there like go for it, Is there like anything behind the scenes that was pretty cool that you could tell us about? Yeah, I mean there was quite a few things. Uh, one of the things was meeting everybody, just all the different contestants and the kids that were there to see that seeing how they traveled so far to get there and do what I do. Uh, so that was pretty cool, and just meeting the judges, talking to them, you know, behind the scenes is pretty awesome. Yeah. And so have you been contacted by them at all recently or anything? Got anything, any breaks? Not recently, no, but uh, a lot of great things came out of it. A lot yeah. of great things came out of it. I would say me and Keith Urban were pretty good buddies. Well, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, coming on here, and that's really cool to talk to a, an American Idol guy, you know. It's like really awesome. And you sound great. I got you recorded, and we're going to put you on the podcast. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. It's nice to meet you, buddy. To see through his disguise To step in a wrong direction He got his hold on me Met the devil in Oklahoma Been a tough time getting through Sat me sitting on a river bank Praying in Jesus' name Come and save my soul I know time It was never on my side
so badly Lord knows I'm to blame If I'd stay here with you, girl Things just couldn't be the same